Radio News online at theonion.com. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you're welcome to join us here toll-free to bring up whatever's on your mind at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Also, we have Skype. You can Skype in to the show at username lrn.fm. Coming up, Uber has been raided. We will tell you where and what is going on uh, with that situation. We've been following the Uber and Lyft sort of drama if you will, that has been brought upon them by various governments around the U.S. and around the world. Uh, So that's on the way here tonight. Plus, a prosecutor actually apologizes for going after an innocent man. Of course, he didn't apologize until decades later. But nonetheless, uh, we can cover that story, too. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's go to uh, Skype, though, where we've actually got a special guest on the line. Virgil Vaduva is with us. Virgil, welcome back to Free Talk Live. Hello, Ian. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Uh, You actually were in the news today, and Mark and I happened to both notice the story, and so I figured let's get Virgil on the air instead of just reading. It's never ending. Yeah, reading the news I'm I'm following in your footsteps, Ian. Yeah. Meaning you've gotten arrested multiple times? Yeah, you're getting yourself in lots of trouble. (laughs) Yes, (laughs) yes. So... um, well, you're also you're also doing it in Ohio, and uh, you're not in New Hampshire yet, which is He's extra risky. He's got a team risky. with him, though. Yeah, you do have some support out there, which is which That's is. That's all nice. we've ever said is to get a team with you. So uh, you're a photographer by trade. That's what you do, and you work with the Green County Herald as uh, one of the the myriad of uh, things that uh, is on your plate. You have also engaged in civil disobedience recently, where a new uh, ordinance is it a new ordinance or has it been around for a long time? I, it's been around for about a year and a half or a couple of years or okay. so. Okay, it's relatively new in the scheme of things. Yeah. In uh, in Xenia, Ohio, uh, which is I guess near to where you live, but you don't actually live within that political jurisdiction. I do not live in their jurisdiction, but it's about ten or fifteen minutes away from where I live. Right so now. you drove out to Xenia a uh, what a few weeks back, and you got arrested for violating a panhandling ordinance. That's right. That's right. Yes. Uh, I found out as soon as I found out about this ordinance, I decided to uh, commit some civil disobedience. Uh, I can't say that I committed a crime because my trial is still due here in a couple of days. But um, and I was cited. It's a it's a fourth degree misdemeanor here in in Ohio. It's a two hundred and so dollar fine and 30 days in jail. So I'm actually Mm -hmm. facing some real jail time here. Right. And you were also out on bail conditions, weren't you? Because you were arrested at a protest where you were there covering it as a photographer uh, at a mall as a sit-in or a die-in, as they called it. It was a die-in, and I am out on bail right now. Fortunately, the bail conditions, after I spoke with you, uh, I did check my bail conditions, and they're not very strict at all. All they demand is basically that I show up for court. Okay, that's good. So there's no, uh, there's no contradiction there or violation in any way. Okay. So you went to court for the first uh, initial hearing, a pretrial conference on the, uh, the arrest for panhandling. That's right. And, uh, and we had a couple of hearings. This judge seems to go out of his way to, uh, to really reinforce the fact that I should need legal representation. He's very mm. concerned about the fact that I do not have an attorney. And, and then I spoke with a couple of criminal You know, attorneys. of course, he's an attorney, right? Of, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> right. and, of and course the attorneys think we need attorneys. Right. You can't handle right. this and on I, your own. We've, cr- we've, we've spent centuries building a system that's so Byzantine and convoluted that we can only possibly le- allow attorneys to, to navigate it. Uh, you have to have three years of school to do this, and frankly, none of them know what they're doing anyway. It's not really the qualification of the three years. It's, it's really just about uh, only the lawyers want to let the lawyers in the club. Yep. Yeah, they make up things as they go, pretty much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, he's very insistent on this. And then I spoke with a couple of local uh, criminal defense attorney attorneys, and they they both pretty much said, uh, you know, you know why he wants you to have a lawyer, don't you? And I said, no. He said, they said, uh, well, you're uh, you you would make his life a lot easier when you have an attorney. You know, they can they're a middleman for you. They can negotiate and and do the plea bargaining yes. stuff and all that. But when you're a pro se, you're making their, their lives miserable. Really? So that's the reason. It. That's interesting. Yeah. I wonder why that would be. I mean, I've never felt like uh, I was a burden. I've taken a lot of cases on my own to court, uh, defended myself, 
in pretty much, well, actually all of them, except for the Robin Hood case, which was a group case, and we had a, a great free speech attorney sign up for that one. Uh, but I've never really felt like I've been a burden on the court. I mean, I've certainly filed motions and things like that, but so do attorneys. So I guess maybe the yeah. idea that you're a burden would be that you need a lot of hand-holding or something like that by the judge, or maybe you don't know the process and you'll be asking a bunch of questions uh, in court. It's possible. For example, today I did not know how to how subpoenas work mm -hmm. because I filed uh, I filed subpoenas. I being at all the, count, the city council members, <laughs> the people that passed this law. Oh, this is going to be a circus. I subpoenaed all of them. It's going to be epic. And, uh, and of course, the, uh, they, they can't do anything about subpoenas. They can object. The city prosecutor objected, but the judge pretty much said, well, you will have to deal with this at the trial. So all these people hmm. have been subpoenaed. Interesting. It's so be they, interesting. Yeah, epic. so they're going to have to show up, and then they're going to try to object and maybe prevent them from testifying at the trial. Probably. Now, do you get a jury on a case like this, or is it too small? Because, yeah, there's jail time, right? So you get a jury. Yep, absolutely. I, you have to request a jury mm -hmm. trial. It's not automatic. Are you going to do that? A jury trial. Absolutely. I have done that, and there will be a jury on, on Thursday here. To talk this to is me. starting yes. Thursday? Thursday morning. In two days, Thursday morning at uh, 8.30 a.m. Absolutely. Wow. Okay. That's what, Normally, I'm used to pretrial conferences happening weeks away from the actual uh, trial. So this is your – are you ready to go? I mean, you, have you had enough time to prepare your defense? I'm ready to go. Okay. All right. Well, so, I, I, was planning on, I was planning on using a constitutional defense, but that was kind of shut down today. Tell me about that. What happened? Yeah, so uh, it, during the pretrial, the, the judge kind of goes back and forth, you know, asking questions here and there. And, uh, and the, uh, to my surprise, the prosecutor uh, basically filed a verbal motion. He motioned the, the court to, to basically prevent me from uh, raising the constitutionality argument for this law. Now, and, wait a minute. And, Before you go on, I mean, had you filed a motion indicating your intention to uh, argue on a constitutional basis? What would I did been? not. No. So this was totally preemptive. He just said, this guy knows his rights. We don't want him talking about Dear the Constitution. Dear God, somebody might bring up the First Amendment <laughs> to the Constitution. We're lawyers. We don't want to talk about the highest law in the land. Every one of these people should have should be shut down out of their business. What was the motion exactly? Right. Well, it was a verbal motion, and I can't remember the words that he used. He, he used one of these legalese uh, you know, type of uh, sentence. It was basically a motion to minimize the scope of, of my argument um, only to the and, facts and, in the case not to any controversial yes, yes. Okay. not to raise constitutionality issues not to raise the first amendment not to subpoena is it a fact in your members. case that you did this because you believe it is a violation of the first amendment of the united states constitution of course, of course. that was the whole point excellent then it shouldn't be a problem because this is a fact in the case exactly. Wow. It is, absolutely. So the judge approved? A bunch of criminals, it, from it, the guy in the black moo, moo all the way down, from the ones in Washington, D.C., all the way to Zinnia, Ohio, it is a cartelized gang mm. of lawyer thieves. So yep. he approved this motion. He, grant, he granted it, the judge. Well, it was a sit-in judge. So the normal judge was at a funeral today, and this was like some retired judge that mm -hmm. uh, you know she she sits in, and she kept going on about, well, I have to rule on this, I have to rule on this, and when I mentioned the constitutionality uh, issue after the motion, she said, you may not bring the constitution up here. This is not the place for that. <laughs> where no, wait, is wait, the, wait. if it's not a court of law, where? When she said you can't bring it up here, did, what, did she mean during the discussion about the motion, or did she mean period at all? You can't bring this up at trial. And, at all. Not at the trial, not anywhere. It's, okay, so not, you got this on video, right? have it on audio. I had Bambuser running. I have the audio posted already. It's been making the news. Really? It has pretty much enraged a bunch of people, anywhere from Coblock folks to sovereign folks to anonymous it's kind of being all over the place this oh, is not the first fine. time we've heard of this in sort of the you know the lower court level where it's like we don't talk about the constitution here can yeah. somebody explain i mean you know really seriously Virgil, did you not ask this woman? Well, if it's not in the legislative, or excuse me, in the judicial branch that I bring up the Constitution, exactly where am I supposed to bring it up? I'd bring it up during opening statements. 
Yeah, well, yeah, I'm you know, I too. was at a loss, and, and Ian, maybe you have some advice because I was so shocked by what she said. My face turned red. I was so angry that I oh. was at a loss of words. I didn't know what to say. <laughs> really? Uh, it's so funny. All right, well, I don't have advice because I'm not a lawyer, but we can talk about some ideas here in a moment. Uh, more with right. Virgil. He is uh, possibly going to jail for panhandling in Xenia, Ohio. More coming up here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light System System today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, 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 hey. hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait, no, no. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Join us here toll free at 855 450 free. Coming up, Uber rated. We'll tell you where. 855 450 3733. Don't forget, you can join us on Skype. 
Skype username is lrn.fm. Very simple. You just uh, reach out to us on Skype, send a contact request. It will be approved as soon as we notice it coming in. It usually doesn't take much more than a segment of the show for us to notice. And then after that point, it'll be easy for you to call on Skype from that point forward. Coming up the end of the, uh, of the week here, Mark, you and I, we're leaving on Friday so we can be in Austin, Texas for Saturday and Sunday for the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin, which I'm excited about because last year we went to the very first Texas Bitcoin Conference. It happened kind of outside of the city limits at a, like a racetrack. Uh, this year we're going to be right in the heart of downtown, and uh, I think just that's you know, just more fun for a convention to be in a, sort of an urban area where we can go out and you know go out to eat different fancy restaurants and things like that. Or not so fancy restaurants, city restaurants. They're fun. We went to uh, Stubbs, Stubbs barbecue. The barbecue. Was, yeah, it was really awesome. Yeah, it was. Uh, well, it was pretty good. I have to say, not not the best barbecue I've ever had, but uh, yeah, it was different. It, it was fun. So uh, Texas. I mean, Bitcoin. it's not like hanging out and having dinner with you is my the, considered the high point of my uh, <laughs> life or anything like that. TexasBitcoinConference.com. Uh, we'll see you there. We're going to be broadcasting live from the event, and you can get twenty five bucks off. Mark, did you ever find out when the online registration closes? For the Texas Bitcoin Conference, I looked it's and I didn't see, um, didn't really see that. So. Okay, yeah, it's important for us to to know that at some point they are going to close online registrations, and then you'll have to show up at the door. And I cannot guarantee you FTL will get you a discount at the door. Uh, you'll be uh, rolling the dice with that one. So better to go and get your tickets sooner, yeah, do it now rather than later. TexasBitcoinConference.com. It's coming up. Plus, they're going to feature the second million dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon, and you get $25 off by using code FTL at TexasBitcoinConference.com. We'll see you there this weekend as uh, we go back to Virgil Viduva with us here on Skype. Virgil, you were in court today, and you say you've got audio of the hearing, which shocked you. You were shocked yes. that this uh, district court judge basically said, yeah, there will be no constitution allowed in my courtroom. Yep. Yeah, she did say that. Those are her exact words, more or less. Uh, th no constitution will be will be uh, mentioned here in this courtroom. And uh, she followed through with that. Uh, let's see. She she kind of laughed at me when I mentioned that panhandling uh, is about free speech and about the First Amendment. So. She uh, laughed. What do you say to a judge? Apparently, yeah, she's yeah. not keeping up because the courts are ruling all across this nation. <laughs> that's the case. What this woman is doing is uh, irresponsibly wasting the the tax money of the people of Zinnia. She should be like, "Hey, police department, don't you read the papers? This crap is unconstitutional and has been. Get this guy out of my courtroom and bring me some lawbreakers." Now, Virgil, yeah, well, she is retired, Mark. Give her a break. Come on. Well, no. <laughs> All right. So, but wait a minute. Now, didn't you tell us before that the ACLU of Ohio actually reached out to you? What happened with that? Because it sounds like you're going this alone. Yeah, I never heard back from them, so mm. I don't know what what they did about this. No uh, news but no, is not they never called news. me back. It, yeah, it it doesn't matter, anyways. I mean, if if we, if I end up losing here, uh, there will definitely be a, a federal lawsuit filed. Mm. You know, I have I have enough money and. I just gotta gotta find the, uh, the the correct attorney, the right attorney that focuses on civil rights and is willing to take a case like this on, because uh, I have no problem following through with this. This is is this your first? Is this going to be your for, uh, your first court hearing, your first uh, actual trial that you've done? Yes, this is my first uh, trial that I participated in, outside of you know the speeding tickets and, and things like that. And I'm representing myself, so I don't have an attorney. Uh, and it's it's kind of a hit and, and miss thing. You don't you don't know their rules. You mm. know they. They're obscure. It's hard to understand. Hard well, to read. Well, that's one of the nice things about uh, about not having an attorney, and this could be one reason why the judge really wants you to have an attorney, because the attorney has essentially sworn an oath to the court system. They, you know, they work for the courts, True. and True. Uh, you know, they don't get paid by the courts, but essentially they have a, an oath of allegiance to some extent, from the, what I understand, to the court system. So there's just certain things that attorneys will not do. Uh, so, for instance, an attorney would never dare to say in front of a jury, you know, I'm facing 30 days in jail for this or, you know, my, or my client is facing 30 days in jail for this because then he could be sanctioned in some way for breaking one of the cardinal rules of court. But if you say that, then the only thing the judge can do at that point is pretty much say, oh, ladies and gentlemen, of the jury, I'm going to strike that from the record. You need to disregard what Mr. Vaduva has said there. Oh, I'd, I'd right. go him a, even one better than that. I'd say, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, uh, these people here in this courtroom are wasting your time. Court, courts yeah. across the nation have ruled this to be a free speech issue you remember the the first amendment it's the freedom of speech and that's what people right. need is and speech then objection in order, right 
and then let the prosecution come in with their objection and start objecting to you talking about Looks like about they're the objecting to the First Amendment in a court of law, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Well, well, Hence uh, the, you, the waste you won't of time. Get to, you won't get that far, Mark, because once the prosecutor objects, the judge is going to call a conference at his desk or outside of the room, and the jury will not get to hear the, the arguments about the objection in that case. So he will try to... Uh, preclude them from from as much knowledge of that but as possible. But you can do things in the courtroom that right. the lawyer can't. And I would just point out, look, we're objecting to the First Amendment, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, well, I fully, I fully intend to communicate to the jury that I was prevented uh, to talk about the Constitution. Uh, I fully intend to tell them that the judge swore an oath to the Constitution. Um, I have full intention to talk about these things and, and maybe back off about, you know, making a constitutional only argument. But uh, I have no intention, uh, you know, of not talking about uh, the constitutionality of this. So. Right. So you can talk about that during opening statements. You can talk about that if you decide to testify as well. If you choose to get up and actually give testimony uh, in this case, then you can talk about your motivations for right. it. Uh, and you might was, as well. What are they going to do? Ask you questions like, "Did you, uh, you know, panhandle for money out in front of the courthouse with a camera?" All oh, right, yeah, you <laughs> right. know, you did that. Right. Also, the prosecutor said that bringing up the Constitution would confuse the jury, and I can't. Yeah. He said that on the record. I can't <laughs> believe that a prosecutor would make a statement like that. Now, what is what happens in Ohio if somebody brings up jury nullification? Well, there's case law that basically uh, clearly prevents you from doing so. Really? So you may not bring it up. But I, I heard that uh, there is a fairly decent-sized protest ah. scheduled for Thursday morning at the courthouse. It sounds mm -hmm. like a lot of people from Anonymous and, uh, and wow. other folks would come. And FIJA, you know, people from the Fully Informed Jury Association will show up to handle, uh, hand out flyers. Oh, that's so great. I have no idea. I have no idea how that's going to turn out, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I hope that somebody gets a video of some of this so we can, you know, our listeners can kind of uh, come in from afar. And I hope see this what it was gets like. dismissed. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, I mean, that they're wasting people's time. It sounds like they're going to the mat with this. It Mark. does. It sounds I like know. they're going to waste everybody's money over this. It's incredible. I am absolutely blown away. In, in some ways, I'm glad they're not dropping it or dismissing it, but I'm blown away that this prosecutor has doubled down on this and is willing to take this to a full jury trial over panhandling. It's ridiculous. All right, so the trial starts Thursday. There may be some protesters out there. There may be jury outreach going on. Um, are you going to be able to get a, an actual camera in for the trial? Because it sounded like yes. you only had an audio track today. Yep, I will. I will have. Uh, we'll have a bunch of journalists already uh, offered to come and, and both stream it live and also uh, handle my my own camera equipment to record the trial. You can file media appearances notices. Mm -hmm. in in Ohio and with, with the local courts, and they are pretty much required by law to let you in. So, yes. All right, we will, good. Uh, we'll well, we'll look online. forward to uh, seeing it uh, it happen. With the aftermath hopefully will not involve jail time for you, and hopefully the jury <laughs> will have a conscience and do the right thing in this case. I thank you, Virgil, for the update thank you so tonight. Much, hey, what's the website people can go to follow along with this? Go to truthvoice.com. The articles I write at the top, you'll get the latest updates right there. Excellent. Truthvoice.com. And thanks, Virgil. We'll keep you, uh, hopefully, you'll be able to call us Thursday night and let us know what happens. More coming up. We live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855 340 SAVE. 855 340 7283. Results will vary from case to case. 
This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. So if you're on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are standing by 24-7 to help you. We also have other pain-relieving braces, too, for your shoulder, ankle, or back. You may be eligible to get these items and more at little or no out-of-pocket cost. Our friendly representatives are standing by now to help you, so please call now. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.fm. Free Talk Live. Welcome back. We'll take your calls about anything you want to discuss. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Mark, uh, folks are not yet listeners to Edgington Post, uh, which is your podcast series that yeah. is an interview series. Uh, they should tune in to get more information about Fort Galt. Well, how do people get uh, to be like, you know, regular Edgington Post listeners. I don't know don't how to do a podcast. Know? I don't know how to do you a podcast. Put, you put your own podcast out and you don't even know how to instruct people on how to tune into it? No. Jesus. No, I don't. It's something to do with an RSS okay, feed. So, okay. RSS stands for really simple server. Uh, no. No. <laughs> no. Apparently it's not simple enough for you. Uh, it's really simple syndication oh. is what that stands for, Okay, well, um, yeah. as I understand it. Anyway, Mark, uh, if listeners are already subscribed to the Free Talk Live podcast, they automatically get episodes of Edgington Post. Uh, but if one would like to subscribe simply to the Edgington Post as its own separate uh, podcast, one can go to freetalklive.com. Look over in the left-hand side, and you will see one of those little RSS-looking links with the three sort of radiating indicators yeah. going out from it uh i don't know how you describe that uh edgington post is one of them you click that and then put that in your podcast client and that'll work there you go yep. so anyway what i did today was an interview with uh, gabriel and luke the guys that are putting together fort galt and this is an amazing project what they're doing is they're creating like a complex or a resort kind of thing down in uh, southern chile of you know, little, small-sized condominiums where 
you can buy in and either a live in this sort of liberty enclave there uh, they were talking about how cheaply they can live in chile and they were saying they were doing it on $500 a month uh, living well on 500 bucks a month it's cheap. yeah i was i was very impressed with that so essentially you can uh, you know enjoy this lower cost of living and that sort of thing by living there year round or you can just have a you know a little slice of heaven down there in in chile and remember it's summer in chile when it's winter up north and uh, you can rent it out the rest of the time, which I think is interesting. They'll be doing sort of a hotel uh, uh, aspect with it. So you'll own the room, but you can rent it out when you're not there. It's fortgult.com. It's going to be put together by Bensonwood. It's going to be nice, high-end, new construction, um, really great to look at. And they don't expect you to sort of pay out all of the front or anything like that. Just 10% of whatever the, the pledge is is the only thing you're really putting at risk because they're going to use that to buy the land and then they'll um, get payouts as uh, as they get uh, have progress going on. It's fortgult.com. Go check it out for yourself. I think you'll be impressed with the pres- online presentation. I certainly was. Fortgult.com. Let's talk to Josh. He's in Detroit. Josh, you're on Free Talk Live. Josh? Yo, yo, yo. What's up? Hey, you're on the air. Go ahead. What's up, guys? No, nah, last show? time I Yeah, first time last time I called, I was pretty hammered. I was smoking weed and I kind of forgot what I was wanting to talk about, you know. Mm, notes. You gotta take notes when you call talk radio, it really helps keep you on yeah, track. Notes instead of notes instead of tokes. I there know. Notes instead of tokes. So yeah, first of all, well I saw online you guys were talking about Scientology. Um I'm going to give you my basis on religion. Eh, it just causes war and racism. Um, well, I don't know much. if religion causes war or racism. Religion is just a belief about the nature of the universe and its relation you know, to God, essentially. Well, who's God? There are some organized religions that might perhaps uh, have gone to war in the past, but I don't think you can Thanks. indict all of religion for uh, for war. That's not really uh-huh. fair. Well, no, it is pretty fair because if you don't believe what I believe, then who's right and who's wrong, correct? Well, everyone can be right about their religious yeah. beliefs. Why does, every, yeah, why, does well, why does one person have to be right but others have to be wrong? No one has to be right or wrong. That's the thing. That's the thing. You know, I'm sick and tired of, you know, oh, all Muslims are bad. They're terrorists, you know. Well, what you're saying is you're tired of people saying that because that's not true, right? Like most Muslims are, are yeah, very yeah, peaceful people. We're, yeah, we're all human. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's a human thing. I'm with you, you know? there, Josh. It's, Thanks for the call tonight, man. I appreciate it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Definition of religion, according to dictionary.com, the set of beliefs, a set of beliefs, concerning the cause, nature, and purpose of the universe, especially when considered as the creation of a superhuman agency or agencies, usually involving devotional and ritual observances and often containing a moral code governing the conduct of human affairs. I can get slippery on the definition of uh, religion. To me, it kind of indicates that you have banded together with other people and just decided to believe something that somebody else said. Other people's not uh, necessarily uh, required for religion. I don't think it is. I I don't think it is by the definition you just gave, but what I'm saying is is I can get slippery on this definition. What I sort of mean is by religion is is organized religion seems to be my definition of religion. Yeah, okay, what you're describing is organized. And I tend not to like it generally. Um, Sure, because organized religion historically has sort of been used to take advantage of people uh, to you know lie to them about the nature of the universe in the hopes of getting their property from them and the uh, extracting money and obedience or having them. them kill for uh, the you know yeah. the, the organization or whatever it is but i do hold a position in a an established organized religion i'm a cl- clerk at the keen friends meeting so i'm mm-hmm. part of the quaker religion but it's you know they in and of themselves are extraordinarily inclusive so you know I guess it's just up to you what you think. Shauna's on the line in Kentucky. You're on Free Talk Live, Shauna. Hey, I was just calling because um, I I was listening to Virgil speak, and I kind of feel for pro state litigants because I actually went through the same thing with myself. And um, can I give you a YouTube? site to check out well yeah if you can tell us obviously you can't give like the youtube url yeah, those, 
Yeah, so like what's the sure. site? Well, if you go to YouTube and you just look up Shauna Sterling, you'll actually be able to see the court videos when I actually went to court. Um, and that's the only way I could get the video footage. But I actually went um, all the way through as a pro se litigant. The judge did try to get me to get an attorney, and I did start off with one. Mm -hmm. But then they kind of scared them off, and it, they're kind of like a gang. They don't want to. Yes, um, definitely like a gang. What was your case yeah. about? What was? Why did you go to court? Well, I went to. It was a foreclosure case um, where uh, um, a company I bought a home from. They weren't licensed or registered in my state to even do mortgages. I didn't know that until I initially got an attorney. And then I bought a home for 104000 and it actually was only worth 40000 It was full of lead paint, and they didn't disclose it, and it was uh -oh. found in the home. So we went all the way to jury trial, and the jury – and I barely got it to jury trial. They were trying to deny me it, but I barely got it to it. And um, they, um, the jury voted unanimously for me. Oh, good for and you. Then, and they – and, and, and that's one thing. If you go watch, you know, I listen to you guys a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I also like Alex, too. So Alex Jones so was like, I, I'm in between. But um, the reason I wanted to call, too, is because you mentioned um, for the jury nullification. And I believe this jury used jury nullification. They didn't even know they were doing it. because Can you nullify in a civil other... case? I mean, is that something that is really considered jury nullification? Um, I think they can. I, I was reading into it because I kept going, you know, the jury totally did not follow the instructions because they, hmm. what they did in the instructions was wrong. I'm, I'm before the Court of Appeals right now. So they totally ignored them. You, you see their other attorney get up. The, the judge, was she read the whole verdict, and after, she should have dismissed the jurors at that point, and she kept them there. And the other uh, the counsel for the uh, other individual she got up and she started letting you know them have it to the judge, and then the judge sent them back with orders to rule a certain way, and still what? they didn't want to. That's hilarious. Do that. Yes, it, that's, wow. and it's all on video. So it's all now on video. the other the other side is appealing, and you're going to uh, the appeals court. I'm appealing because what but I she thought you did, won. She then, I know the huh? judge sent them back to change it. She and they did come back and change it. They wrote exactly what she wrote, but they refused to give them one vote. So they didn't get a single vote. They had no legal responsibility to even put any damages against me, and the judge still took my home away and put damages against me. Wow. There's nothing, no legal grounds. So that's why we were before the Court of Appeals. But if you wow. look that up, you'll see Shauna, what, was, what, is, what, is, what do people search? Shauna what? Sterling. Sterling? Sterling? I can't you, find Shauna it on here. Sterling. Spell Shauna. Go to you. S-H-A-W-N-A. Thanks for the call tonight. -E Good luck. Sterling, thank, thank you for the you. call. I appreciate it, and uh, and good luck Bye. in your appeals court. There's more on the way here. 855, 450 free, just more proof the judge can do whatever he wants, apparently. So who else will you meet at the Get Prepared Expo? For starters, from Republic Broadcasting, John Moore and John Statmiller. From GCN, Aaron and Brad Dakins, Joyce Riley, and me, Vincent Finelli. Joining us are the instructors whom you've learned to trust. Surgeon of the Year, Dr. Norman Shealy. Engineer, Matt Stein, the real Fox Mulder of the X-Files, Dr. Richard Allen Miller, author and analyst, Captain John Reagan, your counter-terrorist from Central America, Mike Ma, dental center owner and my dentist, Dr. Howard Shane, radiation instructor, Craig Douglas, author and survivalist, Rich Sheban, author, Judy Dollarheit, cancer center owner from Mexico, Dr. Patrick Vickers, bug out expert and pilot, Captain Bill Sermo, beekeeper, Jeff Maddox, seedsman, Mike Knox, author, Gayla Pruitt, author Harry Cooper, food expert Joe Accapinti, and Bill Whaley, the junk man, March 27, 28, and 29. GetPreparedExpo.com, the largest preparedness and survival expo in the USA. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall 
all between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free 855-450-FREE. Coming up, Uber rated. We will uh, tell you what happened here in an, uh, just a few moments, our toll-free number again is 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype as well. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. With you tonight, Ian here. And Mark. Let's jump right back into your calls and thoughts. Go first to Andrew, listening in Birmingham. Andrew, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Go ahead, sir. Uh, well, I had, I guess, three kind of points that are collinear, although... Uh, the first one is that um, I had an employee recently ask me for a raise, and it just, as as much as I understand how I have to pay, uh, you know, my the quarterly FICA tax, um, <laughs> I held my tongue, but I wanted to say. Hey, you know, if you want to raise, because she was only asking for like a fifty cent, you know, per hour raise, which is like nothing really. Um, except that, you know, I have to pay, you know, fifteen point three percent divided by two every quarter. I have to pay that for every employee I have for every hour that they're paid. Is that do you, do you understand what I'm? saying? 15.3% is that social security? Yes, exactly. Okay. So that that's split between so half of that the employee pays and it's deducted directly from their paycheck. Yep. The other uh you know 7.65% is uh I have to pay every quarter. So Right. In essence, she was asking me for a 50 cent per hour raise. And, you know, I wanted to tell her, well, look, you know, I can do better than that. You 
know, if you can convince the federal government from stopping the theft of your uh, assessment on wages, you know, I could give you an immediate uh, or uh, 51.2 cents per hour, you know, raise basically immediately. You know, uh, the problem is that she would have to then immediately pay that to the federal government because, you know, she makes as a basic example, okay, she makes $8 an hour. She has to pay 7.65% to the federal government on her side. Right. But then every quarter, I have to add up the amount of hours that I paid her and then pay that directly to the federal government. And so to me, the power to tax is the power to destroy. So the fact that they own your time as a W-2 employee, I mean, this is a very philosophical question, but the, you know, if the federal government owns your time and they tax it as such, do they own you? You know, do you own yourself? It's a very deep philosophical question. Uh, man, I have three things I'd love to talk to you about. Right. I guess I just have to call in. Three different like, times. Um, yeah, I think that yeah. this is an important question because, you know, when you look at sort of the the paradigm of a master and a slave, you generally don't think of a slave as being able to do to, to choose what type of work that they want to do. But I mean, if the if, if somebody chooses to take the fruits of your labor, that's sort of indicative of slavery, right? Like, you know, a slavery, obviously, you don't get you don't get to allocate 100% of the of the money, so 100% of the money you have no allocation of as a slave, but uh, clearly money has to be allocated back to the slave for medical, food, shelter, clothing, the kind of things that one would have to have. Well, order- because the slaves take care of that on their own now. The master doesn't have to provide those things. It, well, that's the case, but and, and also the, I get you know maybe you'll call it soft slavery or free range slavery mm. or free range serfdom. I don't know. You can come up with whatever term you want to have, but anybody who can take one percent of your income can take ninety nine percent of your income if that's what they wish to do. The problem is, is if you take ninety nine percent of someone's income, they will stop working and they will start taking welfare. So mm-hmm. the question is, is finding that sweet spot for any given amount of income that Where somebody you can has. Milk the maximum and if, amount. If I can interrupt real yeah. quick, if I may. Okay, yeah. so that's when I had thought of telling this girl that, look, you know, I wish that if it were up to me, I would pay 0% of your FICA. You know, you would pay all 15.3%, and I would give you an immediate 7.65% raise. I would give you better than your 50% or your, sorry, your 50 cent per hour raise. I'd give you a 61.2%. But do you see how that I'm information sorry, I, doesn't I benefit her in any way? I mean, this is more of an economic. I know it doesn't at all, but that's yeah. my point is to say, look, I would love to give you a raise. I could give you that and more, but the problem is I have to pay the damn federal government, you know, all this money every quarter for your labor, and you never even get to see it deducted out of your paycheck. And you're already paying. Is there a way around that? I mean, that's I can understand how frustrating that would be as a business owner, and I know that most business people feel they have to jump through the IRS hoops. But what about like you know? I don't know if this is a solution at all. I'm just throwing it out there. What about turning your employees into contractors? I mean, does that mean less paperwork for you? No. Well, it's the the problem with that is that's a very specific definition, and it depends on the amount of directive that you have as a boss over your employees. So if you can tell them and direct them as to where to be, when, for such and such a time, what to do, then they're a W-2 employee and you can't pay them as a contractor. That would be an amazing uh, improvement, yes. So so a contractor, you can't tell a contractor when to show up somewhere? Shouldn't that be in the contract? I mean, if I if I've got a contractor uh, no, who's going to do work them. for me, I expect them no, to be Ian. somewhere. No, I, 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 that would be great. But the problem is that they you just tell them what you want done in the time frame that that would be appropriate, and they then 
as a contractor can choose what hours and how it's done, huh. you know, as is appropriate to you in the contract that you sign with him. Yeah, I, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but uh, they they have definitions by which a an employee is defined. Well, that sucks, um, you know. And it's if you fit legal. enough of these definitions, then you're an employee as opposed to a contractor. Um, hmm. You know, I think that if it was just an argument about hours, you might be able to, uh, you know, f- you define somebody as a contractor as opposed to an employee. But I suspect that there's these other things that get thrown in, hmm. and employers in many cases need employees like people who are defined as employees in order to do specific jobs because a contractor can't do them all yeah it sounds like uh that's a tough situation and and i think as mark pointed out you know a lot of this is going to be lost on her as as sort of a a wage slave so what are you going to do well i have to just tell her that i can't give her a raise even 50 cents an hour because i'm already paying the government, 61.2 cents an hour, you know, I would love for her to have that raise. She could, in a sense, if she could get the government to abolish the FICA tax, you know, if you think of someone yeah, who makes right $30,000 a year, you know, 15.3%, I mean, man, if you make 30000 a year, you're barely feeding your kids, and the government is taking $4,500 of your money. Uh, That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah. That's for a program ridiculous. that may or may not pay you in the, in the future. Oh, it's not going to be there, Mark. Yeah, no way. <laughs> Probably Come not. On. Andrew, good luck with your your uh, conversation there. I hope it goes over as well as it possibly can. Thanks for the call tonight. But I'd point out for those that Social Security has been there, it's less than it's about one percent return on your money. This is the worst mm-hmm. investment that one can make. The only value that Social Security has is is essentially to those uh, people who. I mean, you know, wish to be sort of human ranchers, you know, those those people that say, well, if we don't have Social Security, some people won't pay in. And I think that's absolutely true. Some people won't pay in. Uh, But there's consequences to actions. And the only way that people learn is by having, you know, is that some they see the consequences to actions of some people. And I think that that, you know, is going to going to have to be how it is, you know, maybe. Maybe the way you want to save for your retirement is to have good relationships with your kids so they'll take you in when you're not able to work anymore. I don't know what it is. It's not my business, but I can tell you that Social Security is an incredibly bad investment. Let's go to Lucas in Raleigh, North Carolina, listening to Talk Radio 850. Hey, Lucas. Hey. Uh, I think you may be right that as a str- strictly as a uh, re- looking at return on investment, that Social Security may not be the best value. The upside of Social Security is this. Social Security is supposed to be a safety net, not an investment program. So the point of Social Security is that we don't, as a result, as a society, have a large number of old, unable to work, indigent people that have nowhere to live and must depend on a child, assuming they have one that doesn't make $8 an hour. Lucas, hold that thought. We'll come back to you here in hour number two, which is coming up shortly on Free Talk Live. Our toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people, like when the jeweler ruined my ring and wouldn't do anything about it. But when my Legal Shield attorney called him and told him what my rights were, I received a check for over $2,100. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. Again, 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. This is David Cordani, CEO of Cigna. For more than 20 years, Cigna has worked with the March of Dimes to address premature births in the U.S., Thank you for taking time to learn more about how you could support March for Babies in 2015. Premature births cause horrible suffering and cost billions of dollars each year. That's why Cigna is committed to raising funds and awareness through our employees, family, and friends to improve the health of moms and babies. Please join us in supporting the March for Babies. Start your team today at marchforbabies.org. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, March 23rd, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.74 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,184 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $269. Antiwar.com reports in his first public comments since the election on the worsening U.S.-Israeli relations, President Obama said he believes he has to take Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu at his word when he says he opposes Palestinian statehood. Netanyahu had claimed to be in favor of the two-state solution for many years, but publicly disavowed the position just days before the election last week, which appear to have gained him considerable right-wing support. Netanyahu followed up on the election and White House criticism by trying to backtrack once more, saying he's still technically in support of a two-state solution, just not right now. The U.S. has pushed for clarification. Whatever ultimately comes out of that, Republicans are slamming President Obama over his comments, with Senator Chuck Grassley from Iowa lamenting that the U.S.-Israeli partnership should be assumed to be over, adding the extremely Twitter-friendly complaint, Obama should reconsider because Israel only friend of U.S. The ever-furious John McCain from Arizona also blasted Obama's temper tantrum, insisting Netanyahu should be given the benefit of the doubt on whatever he claims his position to be at any given moment. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system and to fully capitalize on that decision in their fundraising efforts. Bitcoin Not Bobs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports a dozen train cars, including five carrying methanol, derailed on Saturday near Valley Mills, Texas, sparking an evacuation and a hazardous material team response. No injuries or fires were reported, and only one or two methanol-carrying tanks had leaks, according to public safety spokesman Trooper D.L. Wilson. About 10 homes within 1,000 feet were evacuated after the accident that happened at about 5 p.m. Residents were allowed to return to their homes around 9 p.m. There was heavy rain during the time, but it was unclear what caused the derailment, and an investigation is ongoing, according to Wilson. Safety vehicles struggled to reach the 70-car train accident due to the weather. Methanol is toxic and often used as fuel or as a solvent. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the U.S. Supreme Court on Monday will take up a free speech case on whether Texas was wrong in rejecting a specialty license plate displaying a Confederate flag. The nine justices will hear one-hour oral arguments in a case that raises the issue of how states can allow or reject politically divisive messages on license plates without violating free speech rights. States can generate revenue by allowing outside groups to propose specialty license plates that people then pay a fee to put on their vehicle. When Texas rejected the proposal 
in 2010, the state said it had received public comment that suggested many members of the general public find the design offensive, in large part due to the Confederacy being perceived as synonymous with the institution of slavery. The New Orleans-based 5th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that Texas officials did not have grounds to reject the plate, prompting the state to seek high court review. The legal issue is in part whether messages on state-issued license plates represent speech by the government or an endorsement of a private message. If determined to be private speech, the state's rejection should violate the U.S. Constitution's First Amendment free speech guarantee. Steve Shapiro, legal director of the ACLU, which backs the Sons of Confederate Veterans, said although the flag served as a banner for those who supported slavery and segregation, Texas cannot pick and choose the plate it approves on ideological grounds. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It's the Onion Radio News. Raccoon leaders call for the loosening of garbage can lids. This is Doyle Redland reporting. In a 4 a.m. speech at the group's annual Washington, D.C. convention this morning, North American Raccoon Federation President Bristletail called upon homeowners to loosen the lids of their garbage cans providing the ring-tailed mammals with greater access to discarded food scraps during nocturnal scavenging. Every time you seal a standard 30-gallon garbage can, as many as six raccoons are forced to go without their necessary daily supply of congealed baked beans, rancid cottage cheese chunks, and moldy cantaloupe rinds. The 26-pound varmint closed his speech with a stern warning that without raccoons, possums could take over the world. Royal Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. You may dial toll-free here to bring up whatever you want. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features we have waiting for you there with you tonight, Ian here. And Mark. Let's go back to the phones and the fun. we got Lucas in Raleigh, North Carolina. He had called at the end of the last hour, uh, right after we had a guy talking about how difficult it was to give a, an employee a raise due to all of the money that has to be paid out to the government uh, in general. And Lucas, you had just started saying something about Social Security, about how you consider it to be a safety net. Can you kind of recap your point for our audience in case they're just tuning in right now? Sure. And look, I didn't call to get on a high horse about a safety net, but the point of Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid are not, or food stamps for that matter, are, are not to give people a way to retire. It's a way to protect people from being indigent when they hit an age where they can no longer work. And people oftentimes now are, are potentially uh, disabled or too old to work for 20 or 30 years now. We need a lot of money stashed away for that, and the alternative is we have Americans dying in the street. Americans will never tolerate that. That's you ridiculous. Can't on I mean, your Lucas, you make eight dollars an hour, Lucas, to, to support you when you get old. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous that you're going to have Americans dying in the street if you don't have the government social security program. I mean, all of that money that's being paid into Social Security could be put into a program that actually isn't going to go bankrupt. It could be put into, you know, private uh, funds or charities and things like that that can actually help out people in, you know, in a time of need. I mean, to suggest that people would be dying in the streets without Social Security suggests that Americans are not. Excuse me. It suggests that Americans are not charitable and that they're not willing to help out their neighbors and their families. No, in fact. I, I will, I'll go ahead and restate what I said. I said Americans will never tolerate that. Yeah. So I agree with you that Americans would jump up and do something about it if, if that arose. Okay. So I think you could get rid of Social Security. And again, I did not call to talk about this. There's another issue I want to talk about in unpacking what he had to say that I think is more important. This was just my preface, okay. is that we could get rid of those things. And I think as a society, we'd survive. But I also think you'd find there would be some people who don't have children who make more than the minimum wage, yeah. some people who are too ill and who charity can't find because they don't know anybody. These are homeless people, potentially undocumented uh, Americans, who will want, potentially wind up on the streets and need someone to pull them out of the street. And what Social Security and Medicare have done 
at a relatively okay, low Okay, Social cost. Security and Medicare are different things, and you're conflating them. It's really important. It's, social no, Security. I'm not conflating. I'm saying they well, You keep saying them in the same sentence. Medicare. Social Security is a program where people who don't need funding in their um, retirement years will get funding, and that's kind of nutty. Um, like the what, what do you mean by people who don't need funding in their retirement years? I mean, everybody who pays into Social Security is going to get Social Security, right? In theory. In th- and, and you're saying nobody needs that. No. Is that what I said? I said people who do not need that will get it. Give Why me an not? example, Mark. Some people, right. So you could, you could means test Social Security. And look, I did, again, I, I didn't call. If you well, you can't get bring something up if you don't want to talk about it. It's, it that's no, no, that's I ridiculous. Didn't, I, didn't say I, don't want to talk, I didn't say I don't want to talk about it. I said there's a more important issue. I said if you want to take the position that you can get rid of these two things and Americans will jump in and help, you're right. I think okay. the only difference between those two programs is whether or not there's something that everybody can already plan on versus hoping someone will come to your door and say, uh, excuse me, sir, I noticed that your heat is off and it's winter. Can can my church help you? And that, you're right. That would probably happen, but some it would miss some people. The bigger thing that I wanted to address that I thought was fascinating. You don't think Social Security misses people? I mean, you already said that some of these people are I undocumented. It absolutely misses people. It yeah. absolutely right. misses people. I'm not going to argue about whether or not it's perfect because I'm going to tell you right away I already agree with you. None of these programs are perfect. You could get rid of all of them and try to serve that purpose some other way, but nobody's yet sufficiently outlined to me at least, or to most Americans, and so I think— Well, let me outline it to you because I think it's really important. Most Americans don't agree with you. Well, so but, but it doesn't matter. That. Here's one what I want to outline to you. It's my money, and it's none of your damn that business. That like, that's a pretty good outline, right? What? Well, I'm sorry, what? It's my money, and it's none of your you damn said, business. I thought you just yelled at me. Maybe I misheard you. I, I said, it's my money, and it's none of your damn business. That's my outline for the new program. So you're, so you're saying nobody has the, no government has the right to tax anybody anything for any reason. Yeah, you don't get to steal from people. It's not okay. I have a moral sorry, objection. So no government ever has any right to tax anybody. No, never. Taxation Who the hell are theft. these people? Who do these people okay, think so they are? Good. I want so nothing I, to do with them. I'm going I'm to I'm go ahead and say that given your premise that no government has the right to tax anybody, that you're right. And what I want to say is, and this is it. I'll leave you with this. If you want to ask me more questions, I'll answer them all day long. But I want to say the one thing I called a second. Okay. One of the very first things your last caller said when he called was she asked for a 50 cent raise. And the literal words out of his mouth, the actual fiscal words that came out of his mouth over the air was that 50 cents an hour is nothing to me. And then he I didn't went say on that. Thinking, he did say that. I don't, I don't remember it. Okay. Actually. You can go back and repeat. No, he did say that. I call, look, the moment, yes, he did. I said he go did say that. Me. I've just said that three times. Right. Okay. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm having a hard time hearing you. Maybe it's that you keep jumping in when I'm just trying to finish a sentence. So he said 50 cents an hour is nothing to him and then went on to explain why 1.2 cents that he has to pay on that 50 cents is the reason he won't give her a raise. And that is what is wrong with America. He saw an employee that he believes deserves that raise. He could afford that raise, but he won't give the raise from $8 an hour, which is not enough to live on, out of a principle about paying taxes on the 50 cents. And I get the argument. But he's putting the cart before, well before the horse here. Employees need to be paid an amount that is equal to the to, to whatever value they provide that the that the owner, the manager can reasonably provide. And if we if we create a system in which the main goal is to pay people as close to nothing as possible, we as a society are cheating ourselves by really. Uh, uh, it, it, that's everybody trying to get something for nothing. Well, I don't know that we've created I that system. I agree work. with what when you're saying. I hire somebody, okay. When I hire somebody to work, I do not quibble. You know why we jump in? Hour. Because your sentences don't end. Um, that's okay. I, I'm just a little upset because you I hear made you. it all about Social Security. I want to make it about the fact that this guy is cheap and he's complaining about 1.2 cents and well, won't give somebody who's not keen enough to live on. He won't give them a raise even though he thinks they deserve it. That's well, I don't know that he said – did he say they thought they deserved it or said that it was nothing to him? He said that it was nothing to him. Because, I mean, that's not the same – those aren't the same statements. I mean, it but could, he did make it sound like he otherwise story. would have no problem giving her the raise. What else, he, what else did he, he – that's what he said. 
Yeah, I think Lucas is on to something here. Well, oh, oh, and I, I, we gave this, we gave him a little trouble, right? Like I, I did point out, she doesn't care like about the economics here. Yeah. What was that, sir? It's hard you were trying to jump in at the end of my sentence, and I hadn't finished it yet. Okay, go ahead. I'm, let's, well, I, I was asking you because you were talking, and I couldn't hear you. I, I thought that was a question. What is the question, and what is the answer? Well, I, I don't know anymore. Okay. So you, we gave him some trouble um, about his uh, position, right? Like I said that, hey, you know, the, like these questions of greater macroeconomics really don't matter to her. You know that, right? And uh, so we, you know, I think we, we pointed some of that out to him. Yeah. Oh, no, I think Lucas is on to something, though. And thanks okay. for the call tonight, I, I, Lucas. I appreciate it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I did catch that early on, but I didn't bring it back around at the end of the, and yeah. at the, end of the conversation. The employer is going to lose the employee if he doesn't yeah, pay her enough to stay. she can walk away. She can go somewhere else. And that, so I would say we've designed the system where somebody gets— a I didn't si design the system. Okay. Well, uh, we as human beings—so um, are you one of them? I wasn't involved. Marginally. Um, the answer to that is marginally. The <laughs> lady is, uh, the, the lady, we have a system here, um, whether you designed it or not, Ian, where people get paid essentially what people are willing to pay them. Yeah. So, for instance, I used, I give this example a lot. I used to work as a dishwasher in a restaurant. I and used to work as a dishwasher, too. What's that? <laughs> Go ahead. In, in a restaurant? In jail. Okay. Um, and the, the 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 restaurant owner informed me that I was the worst rest dishwasher that uh. they had ever had. I'm a poor choice for a dishwasher, right? right? So you're like not I was, getting a raise. I was terrible at it. I wasn't going to get a raise at that. I did awfully. However, I moved on to waiter in that same restaurant. They thought I did swimmingly. So, you know, different people are going to be better at different jobs. Maybe right. the lady needs to move on to a different job where she'll make more money. I Eight, don't know. 855 450 free. You can share your thoughts here. Uber's been raided. We'll tell you about it coming up on Free Talk Live. The freeze-dry guy, leader in the preparedness industry for 44 years, is closing his California warehouse. Don't miss out on this huge warehouse sale and receive discounts from 30 to 40% off on the finest mountain house and pack-away brand freeze-dried and dehydrated foods for long-term food storage or even everyday use. Plus deep discounts on all in-stock survival gear. The freeze-dry guy is offering a wide selection of freeze-dried foods in number 10 cans and even individually packaged entrees. Remember, meats, vegetables, fruits, and long-range patrol rations are the main components for any long-term food storage. This is limited to stock on hand, so hurry and call 866-404-3663 or 530-798. 4414. Remember, as always, free shipping to the lower 48 states. So hurry up and call 866-404-3663 or 530-798-4414. Remember, this is limited to stock on hand. The freeze-dry guy is your choice for survival food in an uncertain world. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. 
Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, and you can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, joining you tonight, Ian here. And Mark. Don't forget, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. If you are online, then you should be protecting yourself because there are people out there who would like to know what you're doing. Maybe it's your internet service provider who is uh, logging the websites you visit, the search terms you enter, keeping those logs for years in some cases, and then handing them over to law enforcement or perhaps selling your information to private companies so they can mine it for data. That's all certainly possible. Plus, there are people who can sniff your Wi-Fi packets if you're out on your laptop or your smartphone. Maybe they'll uh, snag your bank password or something like that. Uh, so They would love to do that. Yeah, you got to be careful out there. And ProXPN can help protect you by encrypting your data connection. You go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Grab their software. It's free. You download it for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, or Android, plus Linux, uh, proxpn.com slash FTL. Go and get started now, and when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account, which gets you unlimited bandwidth, servers all around the world you can access, you can go and privately torrent, and get past regionally blocked websites, you do that by using code FTL50. And that uh, FTL50 code gets you 50% off the price of their annual account. By the way, that code also locks you in for that savings for the lifetime of the account. So once your first year is done and you're ready to go for year number two, well, you still get the same great deal by using code FTL50. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use that code, get the deal, and then also you get a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. And ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits. So use promo code FTL50 at ProXPN.com slash FTL. It's a great discount on privacy that is priceless. So it was actually last year, Mark, about a year ago, that we were at the Texas Bitcoin Conference. Of course, we're going there this weekend. We had arrived at the airport and realized that uh, we really hadn't figured out how the hell we were getting to the hotel. Yeah. Uh, which was nowhere near the airport. So we uh, tried to figure out what to do, and I pulled up, oh, we're in a big city. They probably have Uber. So I pulled up Uber's app for the first time, installed it on my phone, and uh, I was like, excited because I'd heard so much about Uber and heard so many good, you know, good stories. And, you know, this new ride-sharing concept where, for those that don't know, uh, you, in theory, I've never actually done this because it didn't work in Austin, <laughs> uh, you get the app, and then it knows where you are because of GPS or whatever, or you can tell it where you'll be when you need a pickup. And and then, you know, there are these Uber drivers around and one of them presumably wants to make some money. So they come over, get you and take you where you need to go. And it's supposedly cheaper than like a traditional taxi cab service. So I tried that, installed it. And when I opened it up, I got a, an error message from Uber saying they were sorry. But unfortunately, due to the legal situation there in Austin, they are unable to provide their service. Now, I don't know if that has changed uh, since last year. Some some places Uber has gotten a foothold. Others they've been completely batted back by local governments and state governments that have been on the attack against Uber ever since they've come into business and tried to um, you know establish 
a, a foothold in these various marketplaces. And essentially, the local governments are going to bat for the old taxi cab companies who have been for decades paying for things like taxi licenses and medallions, as they're called in some cities, uh, permission slips, basically, from the government to operate their business. And they don't like very much that somebody else would dare come into the market with innovation, changing the rules, changing the game, doing things differently than had been done previously, which is what Uber and Lyft and uh, some of the other ride-sharing services have done. They've really stirred it up. And these old established sort of old guard, old dogs that have been in the business forever, they don't like that very much. So they've gone to the government gang and they've said, hey, you know, you guys got to do something about these Uber, Lyft people. They are, they're edging in on our territory. And so they have done so. In fact, we've seen stories from all across the United States about various different governments at local and state levels that have attacked Uber and Lyft. And they've also gone internationally. We talked about South Korea at one point in the past. We haven't talked about France. Korea is mentioned in this story here, and it's actually published at copblock.org. The multinational ride-sharing corporation Uber has been a thorn in the side of government from the very beginning. Uber provides a quality service at an affordable price that the government cartelized transport industry just can't match. As true free market entities, companies like Uber, Lyft, and Sidecar operate outside of government regulation, allowing customers to voluntarily choose from a variety of drivers in their area for their transportation needs. The company's smartphone app connects someone who needs a ride with someone willing to provide it. It's already in use in hundreds of cities and 55 countries across the world, and it's very popular with riders who generally pay less than they would for a cab with faster service. Uh, meaning, sorry, with a cab, comma, with or for a cab, comma, with faster service. Meaning they're getting faster service with Uber. Uber drivers are subjected to background checks, vehicle inspections, and insurance requirements, but those aren't the only steps taken to make sure that riders aren't harmed or scammed. The Uber app allows riders to rate the drivers, data that becomes accessible to future potential passengers. If a driver is rude or reckless, he'll get a poor rating and riders won't get in his car. And by the way, you'll also get canceled if you fall below like four stars, from what I understand on Uber. If you, mm. you know, If you're getting bad ratings, you're done for. So uh, payments are handled electronically and uh, through the app, no cash, with Uber getting a 20% cut. And because driver and passenger agree on a price beforehand, passengers don't have to worry about a meter or being long hauled. Providing people with a cheap and voluntary transportation option? No way, says the French and South Korean governments who just conducted police raids on Uber offices in Paris and Seoul. According to French media, 25 officers raided Uber's headquarters for six hours on Monday, seizing emails, documents, and smartphones used by Uber drivers as part of an investigation into the company's Uber Pop service deemed illegal by regulators under a new law that went into effect January 1st requiring all chauffeurs to be licensed. In Korea, Wednesday, Seoul police arrested two Uber executives and charged the company's brand manager as well as at least 27 other employees and drivers for allegedly breaking the nation's transport laws. The city previously had declared that Uber's services are illegal and vowed to ban it. Yeah, we wouldn't want people to get better service. Yep, going so Lower far prices. as to even issue a warrant for CEO Travis Kalanick. South Korean officials are also probing the company over claims that it failed to register its car hailing app with wireless regulators. Apparently in South Korea, you have to register your app with government. Now, I don't know if that only applies to travel apps or if it applies to everyone making an app in South Korea, but that's pretty disturbing. Piggybacking on the actions of South Korea and France, Uber Pop has now been banned in Germany after a court decided the company contravened German law. Judges are imposing fines of 250,000 euros for each violation of the order. So That's pretty hefty. Yeah, this is pretty serious. And so what they're saying here is that, I, and I want to have to, I'm curious to know what Uber Pop is. How is Uber Pop different from, you know, standard Uber? I know they have like Uber Black, which I think is sort of their, uh, you know, counter to black car services. Like a little bit more of a fancy ride than I guess you would standard get from the average Uber driver. So what what is Uber Pop? Anyway, uh, the German government saying the go- peer to peer. I don't know what that means. I, I, I nor do I. Yeah. Uber Pop, Uber's peer to peer service pops up in Berlin is what I got when I. Uh, Let's find out more searched, about that yeah. here in a moment. Uh, but the court decided they have contravened German law. That that sounds like you know German courts here are saying that. 
what you've created. This service was specifically designed to get around our laws. So basically, it's not illegal the way they designed it, but because they designed it in a way that wasn't illegal, it therefore contravened the law, so now it's illegal. You follow me there? Yes. 855-450 free. More coming up here about Uber. Maybe you're a driver and you want to talk about it. It's Free Talk Live. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Free Talk Live's recent Bitcoin sale was a big success, so we decided to extend the 50% discount through April 17th. Free Talk Live was the first ad venue in the world to accept Bitcoins for ads. We love the concept of a value-based digital currency that allows people to actually control their own money. We introduced Roger Veer, Bitcoin Jesus, to Bitcoins, and here's what he said. Free Talk Live is the premier voice for the peace and liberty Bitcoin will bring to the world. By broadcasting this message since 2011, Free Talk Live has been instrumental in creating the widespread adoption that we have today. If you need some advertising for your business, website, or organization, and you want to save half off, send me an email right now, mark at freetalklive.com. This is your chance to save 50% on national radio and podcast ads. Just pay with Bitcoin. Email mark at freetalklive.com. That's mark at freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. After briefly reviewing several documents outlining his parents' dire financial circumstances today, 23-year-old Wesleyan University graduate Zach Wallace told reporters he had, quote, absolutely no clue how his mother and father are going to dig themselves out of the $35,000 of student loan debt they incurred to pay for his college education. I mean, this is going to be really hard on my parents. When I was in college, I just assumed that, you know, they would pay off my student loans within a few years of me graduating. But I never realized how expensive college is going to be for them. Wallace, who graduated with a film studies degree in 2012 and has since had two unpaid internships, told reporters that from the way prevailing interest rates are trending, his parents could easily be paying off his debt for the next quarter century. They're going to be paying for the rest of their lives. And on top of it all, they have to help me out with my rent, too. I mean, it sucks. It really, really sucks. This is the Onion News Network. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You dial soul free to bring up anything that you want. 855-450-FREE is the number. Join us online at freetalklive.com. 
If you want to get some cryptocurrencies, Expresscoin.com is the place to do it. Whether you want Bitcoin or Litecoin or Dogecoin or a variety of other cryptocurrencies they have available at Expresscoin.com, all you have to do, whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, is... Uh, go to expresscoin.com. You start off there. Uh, they allow you to use a money order or a check to get the cryptocurrency of your choice. And you can do it with no fee at all if you use coupon code FTL and you purchase less than $40 worth. If you purchase for more than $40 worth, you're going to have you're going to pay their fee, which of course, it's a very small fee as, as I understand it is the smallest fee of any place that you can get cryptocurrencies. And uh, they make it easy for you. They're a licensed money services business. There's not going to be any monkey business here. Uh, many of the Cryptocurrency companies have gone under, not Expresscoin.com. They're, uh, they're a great organization. Expresscoin.com, coupon code FTL to save. All right, I'm still trying to figure out, I'm on the Uber, uh, the Uber Wikipedia page here, trying to figure out what the difference is between Uber Pop and I think it's smaller cars. Uber. Oh, I just I, I guess I just don't see that anywhere. I mean, there's what the definition I've seen here of Uber Pop is that it connects people with People who are unlicensed, they do not have chauffeur licenses. But the average Uber driver doesn't have that, right? I mean, the average Uber driver, at least in the United States... But Uber just... black drivers do, and I oh, think really? in Paris, they were required to wait 15 minutes for before picking people up. <laughs> so, wh what we're talking about here tonight, at least at this moment, there's more to come here. Uh, in fact, including a prosecutor who's actually apologized to the person, the innocent man that he put in jail... Uh, but the Uber story here is from copblock.org about raids on Uber. I mean, these this is not just some little tiss, uh, a tiff in a court system. They, these government guys yeah. are they're serious about putting a stop to people competing with the established taxi oligopoly. These taxi companies have been in business forever, and they've been protected from competition forever. In a place like New York City, uh, last I heard, the medallions were a hundred were a million dollars a piece. It's just staggering to really even comprehend that that could possibly even make anyone any money. Uh, paying if, uh, is that per car? How do you possibly? I mean, I understand things cost more in New York City, but really. One car is doing a million dollars worth of business at minimum. That's every what year? I think. Yeah, that's what I think it is. Uh, but it, it just—it's amazing how much money they must make doing right. taxi runs. Because I remember uh, when we started doing Free Talk Live a decade ago, we were still talking about—we did talk about the taxi regulations. This was long before Uber ever existed. But I remember we talked about medallions at one point, and they were like half a million or something like that, uh, $500,000. So they've gotten much more expensive uh, even since then. It must really devalue their their uh, medallion if uh, if people can just go ahead and give rides to other people. Yeah, exactly. And that's why one of the reasons why they're so upset. And, of course, the similar scams are being run in South Korea and uh, in France. I the frankly don't give a darn about their medallion value. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, me neither. And so they've gone and they've raided the offices of Uber. I want to continue with the cop block story here. They're imposing fines of uh, 250,000 euros per day in Germany after a German court has ruled that Uber's new Uber Pop service is illegal. They're saying that it contravenes German law. And there's actually another piece over at uh, PC World that kind of goes into that a little bit further. Essentially, the German court is saying that uh, since the drivers do not have chauffeur licenses, that Uber Pop is illegal, and they are threatening Uber with lots of fines. But wait, says CopBlock.org's author here, I thought governments want to help the poor. Aren't business opportunities and cheap transportation alternatives just what poor people need? I would think that it is. Yeah, I mean, hello. Poor people, in a lot of cases, don't have good transportation. If you're poor, you can't really spend money upkeeping a car. I've got this uh, old police cruiser that I drive around, and it's just been having problem after problem after problem. I mean, luckily, I am able to afford to put in the repairs, but it's been one repair after another, and it's getting to the point where I'm getting sick and tired of it. What uh, color Subaru are you going to buy? I don't have any plans at the moment, Mark. I'm hoping, thing. I'm hoping to fix the car up. And, Junk. You know. Well, that's another discussion. Anyway, so I've got this, uh, you know, car, and you know, if if I couldn't afford to put money into it, I'd have to get rides everywhere. And you know, when I don't have a car, and there have been times when I haven't, I've had to get rides from people uh, to go places. And you know, I don't ever require them to be licensed with the government to do that. That doesn't, you know, when you ask your friend for a ride, uh, they don't. You don't ask them to see their insurance policy. You don't ask them to, you know, have some sort of government permission slip. You just 
get a friend to give you a ride somewhere. But poor people need that more than anyone else. They can't afford to put in a bunch of money in repairs. I mean, it's just just not possible. So rich people can absolutely afford to take a taxi wherever they need to go. They can afford to rent a limousine to take them wherever they need to go. It doesn't matter that much to a rich person to not have a car. I mean, what I think Hillary Clinton says she hasn't driven in uh, ever or something like that in her life or in like 30 years or something ridiculous. Oh no, I hadn't read that. So, yeah. So, you know, these It doesn't people, make you sound good. It's like yeah. uh it, it's it's like It doesn't make you sound like one of the people. Mitt right? Romney saying, "Oh yeah, my wife owns two Cadillacs." So, a uh, good point here, Cop Block. Without a large barrier of entry imposed via government licensing and regulation, every individual with a car is a potential small business owner. This is what regulation truly seeks to prevent competition against established financial interests. Regulations on transportation services are intended to protect consumers, but for the most part succeed only in raising prices and reducing quality of service, according to a report by the Mercatus Center. I don't know if that really is the intention of regulations. I know that's what the politicians say. That's what the regulators say. The people who push these concepts say, well, we're just doing it for you. We're doing it for you, the, the people, the consumers. We're trying to protect you. But I don't believe, I don't know how many of them actually believe that. I, I suspect there are a number of them who know that absolutely the reason why they exist is to protect the establishment, is to protect the established business owners. Because well, in many cases, the established business owners are the ones on the advisory boards. All you have to do is look at the licenses for things like floral arrangements and manicurists and dental technicians, uh, you know, like tooth cleaning people and stuff like this, and then realize that people like auto mechanics that fix brakes aren't licensed. And you will see that hmm. this isn't really about, yeah, safety. I mean, you know, yeah. they, they certainly cloak themselves in safety. Obviously, they, they, you know, they want to make sure that people have training in order to be able to say it's about safety. But, you know, the fees go to the government. The, uh, this is really about excluding people out of the market that otherwise wouldn't be competition. The taxi cab companies aren't worried about this because they believe you might not be safe. Come on. Yeah, no doubt. They're not bringing lawsuits against Uber because they're concerned for your safety. They're concerned about the safety of their profits. Uh, Let's go to Timid Susan in Massachusetts. Susan, you're on Free Talk Live. Uh, uh, How are you doing, Ian and Mark? Um, What I want to talk about, first I want to give a quick reference. A guy, Hezekiah Buttersworth, you can find a book on him on Internet Archives. The name of the book is Little Meta Comet or The Indian Playmate. The book and about who? It, 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 the name of the book is Little Meta Comet or The Indian Playmate, and it's by Hezekiah Buttersworth. And what is this? And it was a night. It, what I want to talk about, I want to just say real quick, Native American art. And basically, it's a it's the Wampanoag memorial for it's like a war memorial, and it's an ancient burial ground. And if I can real quick just refer people to go to on Live Leaks, the website Live Leaks at Ramel R A M E L one two four. I'm really confused about what you're saying. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I I'm, I'm, I'm giving us a bunch too. of links and talking about Native American art. I, I, and I'll, I'll talk about it right now. It, again, it's a, it's a Native. Do you know how people sometimes dig up artifacts? Like they try to build a house, and then all of a sudden they come across a graveyard. Yep. Yes. Okay, Poltergeist. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Not, not Poltergeist. No, not, not, not anything like that. Well, didn't they find an uh, Indian? Uh, well, didn't, didn't they have a b- graveyard in Poltergeist? Why bring up poltergeist? Because you asked me what happens uh, if people build a house and they uh, it's on top s- of a graveyard. I, yes, I'm I'm a little lost. I'm going to give you a chance to kind of clear this up here. So we're talking about people okay. building okay. houses, finding uh, an American no. or uh, Native American burial uh, grounds. Where are we going here? All right, I, we're coming I, up I, here I, in moments with uh, timid Susan, eight fifty five. That's the name on the call screen, by the way. I don't know who this is. Eight fifty five four fifty free, eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Hopefully she can help us make sense of this. It's Free Talk Live. 
By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins, but did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com you can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. You can enjoy the features we have on the website totally free. And if you like the show and you want to help support Free Talk Live, please AMP Free Talk Live over at amp.freetalklive.com. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. Concept is you send 5 bucks a month into the show. We invest that $5 back into Free Talk Live so we can get on more radio stations around the country, bring more internet listeners on board, and expose new people to the ideas of freedom. 
And you get perks, too. If you're an amplifier, you get a- uh, access to the Amp Only Facebook group, which is actually pretty busy. There's always new stuff in there every single day. And it's uh, a couple hundred amplifiers in there, so you can interact with other people who support the show and some of the hosts who are in there as well, including Mark, myself, Chris Cantwell, and Rich Paul. Uh, So drop on by amp.freetalklive.com. You'll also get access as an amplifier to the amp-only call-in lines, the amp-only forum, uh, podcast, and more. Go and get the details. Get signed up. makes a big difference for us. You can use any major credit card through PayPal or Visa or MasterCard right on our site at amp.freetalklive.com. Tim and Susan is on with us in Massachusetts you started out talking about Native American uh, artwork, and you recommended a live leak video, which, Mark, you pulled up this video, and it's pretty boring. It's like a rock or something. Somebody re- recording a rock? Yeah, I'm about five and a half minutes in on a rock um, here, and uh, it looks like we've got hun- we have sent hundreds of vi- viewers, because uh, I-, I saw the views before and after we went, and um, I guess a lot of people- You're have- BSing, Mark. You're no. not- I'm not kidding you. Hundreds of people have seen this. Uh, I'm so in the sorry. Last few minutes. <laughs> uh, it looks like a terrible video. Why are we looking at this video? Okay, Mark, please bear with me. I'm Baron. Okay, it's artwork. It's in camouflage. In hello. I'm listening. Yeah. Yes, I, I'm sorry. I'm breaking up a little here. You sound fine. Go ahead. Okay. It's artwork. It's in camouflage. If you look slowly and pause the video at certain places, at 142, you can see cat eyes in the black spot. At 258, you can see on the very left, there's a queen's face. Okay? At the bottom right-hand corner of the rock, there's a bear. At 355 in the video, it becomes a sphinx looking, and it is like a dog face. Is there right. any way to put what that in the, the description point? of the uh, the video so that people I'm, can know I'm, to look? I'm trying. Excuse me? Is there any way to put that in the description of the video so that people can know to look? Well. We don't know if this is your video. Is it your video, is, Susan? I didn't, do it. I didn't do it when I posted the video. Okay. This is your video. So what to, is like, the point of this? I mean, what are you getting at here? It's a very special rock. All right. The, the point is, is that there's, it's a Native American burial ground. There's about... There's, so many rocks, and they all are, you know, interconnected, and they're all carved into and essentially painted in the hieroglyphs. And people can't see it because it's finely detailed, and it's basically done in a rust, in a kind of, it was in the Bronze Age, and it's the bronze, and you have to, it's a looking glass, and if you look in the shadow, Mark, please look in the shadow, and look, there's the underwater panther, and Look at the reflection, and there's a blank void in the shadow. So are you saying that, just to clarify, are you saying that the Indians painted on this rock uh, and that they painted some animals on the rock and that it can only be seen at certain angles or at certain times with certain, you know, sunlight reflecting off of it or something like that? Basically, yes. And and so this is just like a— a neat little phenomena kind of thing that you're sharing. Well, I think with it's us a here? designation that this is a Indian burial ground, yeah. and I'm I'm willing to go for this. I think I'm ready. I'm I'm ready to say. Okay. Are you seeing the 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 animals? I'm seeing <laughs> shapes. Um, I'm, okay. But yes, I mean, this is a significant whole, rock. I mean, I'm 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 willing it's a to big say. Rock. Buddha face too. Look at is a Buddha face. But what is it. the point of this? I mean, is it just like you're saying? Oh, this is neat. Or is there something that else that you wanted to kind of bring forth? Well, it. This is, it is, mass, do you know who Massasoit is? No. No. Uh, you celebrate Thanksgiving, though. Uh, well, you know, I think it's a great holiday, and, he's, and he's gratitude's a, an awesome a, thing. Massasoit was the Native American who allowed the pilgrims on the land, and he signed the first peace treaty. And then from there, we got the story of Thanksgiving, and he was the one who, you know, shared Thanksgiving with the Native Americans. Then his sons, his first son, Umseta, was essentially poisoned by the colonial government. I've done my research. His second son, it's King Philip, went to war. And the whole thing, again, the rock is, if you look at the facade of the rock, look at the relief. It's called, it's called relief. Again, there's a baby, a little baby. Look at the middle of the rock on the left-hand side of the rock. There's also a little, a little black baby. And I'm going to put another video up tomorrow or maybe later when people start paying attention. It's in the, 
these but why should anyone too. care about this? I mean, I just beyond just yeah, oh, ooh. It's, it's being disgraced. All right, do you go and um, go and destroy people's graveyards? And it's being disgraced in two different ways. It's not on a map in any way, shape, or form. Okay, and on top of that, like because it's not on a map, like kids go and you know ride dirt bikes and stuff, and they don't see it themselves. I sat down and I knew, and I was told by um, Mr. Mason when I was in. In junior high school. And so you're upset that there I'm are not, people not who are not treating this with the relevance that you believe that it should be treated with. This this rock. It's, it's a relic. Ab- absolutely, and it's not just one rock. The whole it's a quarter mile area with all the rocks. In gotcha. It. They, well, they, I wish you the best in your uh, in your crusade uh, to try to get people to respect the rock. Thank you for the call, uh, Susan. <laughs> Uh, Toll-free number here tonight, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Mark, you've been studying this video. Uh, Susan claims there are all these uh, animals and faces or whatever in here. Are you seeing it? Seeing any of it? I'm not seeing it clearly, um, but I mean, I would not at the same time discount that this is a sort of significant rock. It's a big rock. I can see that. It's That's big. It does. It does aspect. look. It certainly has some staining on it. Um, I'm willing to say that this is okay. This is part of. I mean, you know, I've, I've gone to a lot of places with a lot of broken down rocks mm-hmm. that people say are significant. Uh, I was just at a uh, Mayan burial ground um, in, in Mayan city uh, not too long ago, and yeah, I mean, you know, if somebody doesn't tell you what the significance of a particular rock is, sometimes you won't know. So yeah, yeah I mean, I'm I'm willing to go for it. Sure. Okay, important yep. rock. Great. Now what? Yeah, that's that's kind of how I feel about it. It's like sort of a non-event or a non-issue. I'm not saying that you know this should be disrespected, that somebody should paint the rock or you know treat it poorly or something. But it sounds like uh, Susan wants it to have more uh, relevance to the average person. Well, if more it, people it see it and they 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 see the significance in it too, then something will happen. Somebody will buy it and you know buy the property, and then you can have. Uh, you know, people visit the rocks. All right. So there you go. 855, 450 free. I don't really know what else, you know, you can do with that one. So, uh, Mark, we were talking about Uber. They have been raided over in South Korea and also in France uh, with multiple agents, dozens of agents coming into the office's headquarters in France, seizing emails, documents, and smartphones used by the drivers there. As copblock.org is pointing out here, there is a report over the Mercatus Center that points out that regulations on transportation end up raising prices and reducing quality of service. The report's authors contend that ride-sharing services like Uber and Lyft are revolutionizing taxi cab and transportation services, but have come under fire from entrenched interest groups that use government to protect their privileges and stifle market innovations, a process known as rent-seeking. The goal of rent-seeking, the economists explain, is to create higher profits by lobbying politicians to impose costly regulatory burdens. That is rent-seeking, Such as licensure, safety uh, prescriptions, and price controls on their new competitors. It doesn't take a lot of money to become a taxi owner-operator and earn more than $40,000 a year. One needs a car, an insurance policy, and an ancillary interior equipment to make a car a taxi. According to economics professor Walter Williams from George Mason University, he says in New York City to be a taxi owner, you'd have to purchase a license called a medallion, which now costs an average of $840,000 a piece. So I was off by a couple hundred thousand there. Yeah, the, 840 a million, whatever. Yep. Yeah. Uh, New York Taxi and Limousine Commission restrictions that generate such a license uh, price outlaw taxi ownership by people who don't have access to $840,000. By contrast, in Washington, D.C., the annual fee for a license to own a taxi is around $300. I'll let you guess which city has more taxis per capita, cheaper fares, and more minority taxi ownership, says Williams. There are vested interests who benefit from keeping outsiders out and therefore enrich both companies with large fleets and single taxi owners at the expense of would-be owners and and the riding public through higher prices. Spokesperson for Uber said Monday's raid was an attempt at intimidation by the French government and asserts that their voluntary ride-sharing service is legal under French law. They filed appeals with the European Commission. There's more on the way here in moments. Our toll-free number, more about Uber on the way, 855-450-FREE. And you can share your experience, plus the prosecutor who is now sorry, decades later, that he put an innocent man in prison. 855-450-FREE. Is it too little, too late? Free Talk Live. 
How many good people procrastinate? When was the last time you updated your last will and testament, your living will, and your health care power of attorney? If you could get these documents included with your Legal Shield membership for no additional charge, wouldn't it just make sense to have the peace of mind of owning a Legal Shield membership? Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855 855- 340 save that's 855-340-7283 results will vary from case to case by now you heard about bitcoins but did you know that over 65,000 businesses accept bitcoins listen if you're already earning bitcoins or trying to make money in the bitcoin market you've got to know bidbit.co because at bidbit.co you can receive bitcoin by selling your personal items or business products you heard right whether personal or business you can now buy sell and auction your products quickly easily and securely at bidbit.co that's b-i-d b-i-t dot c-o bidbit.co Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at LibertyBeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, March 23rd, 2015. Gold opened today at $1,184, up $1. Silver opened at $16.83, up $0.08. And Bitcoin is trading around $267. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. In the news, the fight against the controversial Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement continues as a possible April vote nears. The United States and 11 other Latin American and Asian nations are working out the final details of the secret agreement that would affect around 40% of the global economy. Recently, representatives of several Japanese non-profit digital rights groups presented a joint statement describing the threats the TPP represents to Japan's culture. The organizations believe the extension of copyright terms will threaten the anime and fan art communities. They cite a provision that allows authorities to act on alleged violations without a formal complaint. Critics of the trade deal also fear the loss of sovereignty by the individual nations and an increase in power for transnational corporate bodies. Over the weekend, Senator Rand Paul took an opportunity to attack Hillary Clinton for supporting the Saudi kingdom and called on Americans to boycott the nation. Paul called on Clinton to return gifts given to her family foundation by Saudi Arabia and other nations who have a record of human rights violations. The senator particularly called on Clinton to stand against the kingdom's treatment of women. The expected presidential contender said America should organize boycotts, as it did during the apartheid of South Africa. The Russian Federation is threatening to aim nuclear missiles at Danish warships if the nation joins the North Atlantic Treaty Organization's missile defense system. Denmark has promised to contribute radar capabilities to the missile shield, which NATO claims is supposed to protect member nations from Iran. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from the Texas Bitcoin Conference, March 28th and 29th at ACL Live at the Moody Theater. Join scores of Bitcoin experts and enthusiasts from around the world for talks, networking, and a million-dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon. Tickets on sale now at TexasBitcoinConference.com. Use coupon code LIBERTYBEAT for $25 off your ticket. That's coupon code LIBERTYBEAT. Looking to promote your business or cause to tens of thousands of loyal listeners? Well, for a limited time only, the Liberty Beat is offering you the chance to say big while spreading your message. It's simple. Just sign up for three months of advertising and get your fourth month free. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity. 
Just visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise and use coupon code GCN in the Describe Your Company section. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, March 23rd, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The chief of the Anaheim Police has responded to public concern over the department's use of so-called Stingray surveillance tools. Chief Raul Quezada says he hoped to provide clarification as to the use of the technology by the Anaheim Police Department and to reinforce trust between the police and the community. The department has come under scrutiny after it was revealed they were using Stingray or cell site simulators, which can gather data from cell phones. Chief Quezada stated that every time an officer uses one of the devices, a court order is signed by the judge. The chief also claimed the cell site simulator does not retain third-party information and is not being fed to any database operated by police or state or federal government agencies. The University of Delaware administration has denied a congressional request for documents related to funding of one of the university's professors who is also an opponent of climate change science. The House Committee on Natural Resources requested details about the funding of Professor David Lee Gates and six other researchers. Lee Gates is a professor of climatology at the University of Delaware and has a history of controversy regarding his stance on climate change. The university said it's their policy to allow members of faculty the academic freedom to speak out on their own research and conclusions, no matter how unpopular. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by CoinArch, offering innovative online trading solutions for Bitcoin. Visit CoinArch.com and sign up using coupon code MAX to get free brokerage for the first seven days. It only takes $10 to start an account. That's CoinArch.com. Support also comes from Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, March 23rd, 2015. I'm Brian Hagen reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. With job numbers near historic lows, Forbes magazine has released a list of tips for finding a job, all of which involve witnessing an employer murder someone. Forbes says despite the grim economy, employers are still hungry for talented workers who know how important it is to forget about whatever they think they saw or heard. So uh, me and a couple of friends were out smoking at the viaduct the other day, and uh, we saw this really rich guy in a Mercedes pull up in his car and drop a uh, nothing. Now I'm the Vice President of International Development. According to Goldman Sachs CEO Lloyd Blankfein, we had a great quarter and hired hundreds of new employees. I haven't done anything wrong and all my employees will tell you the same thing because that's the deal we had. But the article warns that stumbling onto a coke fueled CEO strangling a prostitute isn't a foolproof method for finding work because employers are just as likely to murder you as they are to hire you. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Dial toll free and bring up anything that you want. 855-450-FREE as we launch here into the third hour of the program. That's 855-450-3733. More on Uber and the trouble they are continuing to receive at the hands of various governments, not just in the United States, but around the world. Uh, the headline from copblock.org, they have been raided in France and South Korea. Dozens of officers raided Uber's headquarters, uh, according to French media, for six hours on Monday, seizing emails, documents. That's I think they meant Monday last week. But anyway, seizing uh, emails, documents, smartphones, uh, as well as they are investigating the Uber Pop service, which has been deemed to be illegal by regulators in France, also Germany has ruled against Uber Pop, which is a way to, uh, again, hook up with somebody who's willing to give you a ride somewhere. You use an app for your smartphone and, you know, you connect with another driver. With You, you need a ride. You connect with a driver. That person gives you a ride. You pay through the app and everybody's happy, except for the government regulators. They're not very happy about this at all. And because that's because the uh, people who they have been regulating for years, the taxi cab companies, they're really upset about Uber, considering Uber is bringing innovation to the business. Well, it's, when it really comes to these, many of these regulation boards are peopled by the uh, 
the, the big businesses in town that are That's concerned correct. with this stuff. So I'll bet you these transportation boards have more than one taxi cab owner on the board because those are the people that are going to decide whether or not you get to compete with them or not. And mm-hmm. they don't want competition from the average individual. As we stated here previously, it doesn't take much. Um, as uh, who, who was it? Sewell? Um, uh, I uh, can't remember what the know, name of the economist about. was. That, oh, Walter uh, Williams? Walter Williams, uh, who said that it doesn't take much to run a taxi cab. Essentially, all you need is a vehicle. Right. And most people have one here in the United States. So you can go into competition with a taxi cab company, uh, you know, if you can get your get the word out about what you're doing. And that's that's really what it comes down to is it's all marketing. And Uber helps with helps people with that. Uber has filed an appeal with the European Commission in regards to what's going on in France. In the statement, a company noted the raid unfolded 48 hours after France's Supreme Court referred to two key provisions of the chauffeur licensing law to the country's constitutional court. Uber says it plans to vigorously defend the rights conferred upon it by EU law and the French Constitution. Uber is expected to fight the actions of the South Korean and German governments as well. In reference to Germany, a spokesman said the company would appeal the court's decision and in the meantime introduce an alternative ride-sharing service being developed specifically to fit the court's interpretation of existing regulations. Uber Pop remains available in France, though some 250 chauffeurs have been fined since the beginning of the year. In recent months, we have seen more and more targeted law enforcement operations geared toward ensnaring drivers of Uber and Lyft, especially in the United States. Police in Madison, Wisconsin, appear to be conducting routine rounds of sting operations on ride shares. This is one of the most liberal cities in America here. Right, Um, after the little guy. They're showing, yeah, they're showing you their colors. It's not, (laughs) you know, liberal politics isn't about being for the little guy. It's about being for those in power. And that's the truth with conservative politics, too. It's just they take it's different flavors of fascism, mm. frankly. Back in April, an operation resulted in $1,300 in fines for drivers. And in August, a second operation netted $1,000 in fines for the department. Officers in plain clothes used apps to summon rides and then cited the drivers for violating the city's taxi ordinances and for transporting passengers for hire without a license. Now, I remember we did talk to Uber George, who uh, he works for, he actually formerly of the TSA, working now uh, for Uber and Lyft in the D.C. area. And if I'm recalling correctly, he did say that Uber will back their drivers. So if, you know, if you're an Uber driver and you get stung in Madison, for instance, you bring Uber the ticket, they'll provide the legal defense uh, to take that to court, essentially. So, you know, I think that's great. That yeah. they are backing their drivers like Otherwise, that. they wouldn't have di- drivers. Right, because that's what this tactic is intended to do. This tactic is intended to intimidate the drivers. They figure, okay, well, Uber's a big company. They've got all this money, and they're willing to spend all kinds of money and time in court. And we don't really want to go up against Uber, so we'll go after their drivers, these independent folks who really, they're not employees of Uber. They're essentially contractors. They work when they feel like working. And, you know, they sort of clock on and they start taking rides and then they can clock off anytime they want and stop taking rides and go and do whatever they need to. That's because they're not employees. Right. I learned that uh, earlier in the the show here tonight, the difference uh, legally between the two. And so if you go after the drivers, these guys, you know, they don't have the legal chops. Many of them have never been arrested before. They don't, you know, have the experience to go to court. And so it would be a good tactic if Uber didn't stand behind their drivers, but they do. So uh, so that apparently, you know, that over time is not going to be too effective for the, the police, I don't think. But I guess it might affect certain people who just get scared about the cops in general or they don't want to, they feel uncomfortable getting a ticket from a police officer. So a uh, police captain in the traffic division said at the time that fi- the fines were meant to, quote, send a message that the city was not going to tolerate their operation without licensing. Unquote. After police in Pittsburgh issued dozens of tickets. You know, license is uh, when the government takes away one of your rights and then sells it back to you. If they sell it back to you, because in some cases you can't get a license. Like in New York City, the only way to get a medallion is to get an existing medallion from somebody who wants to quit the business, which means you can't get a medallion in New York City. Uh, Same thing's true of like liquor licenses. Uh, In a lot of a lot of places, there's a set amount of them, and once they're gone. You can only acquire one when one is given up. So uh, licensing is a is even more even worse than what you suggested, Mark. 
Uh, after police in Pittsburgh issued dozens of tickets with penalties varying from $25 to $300 to drivers for operating without licenses, judges issued cease and desist orders to both Uber and Lyft after the Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission filed a petition against them on June 16th of last year. Since then, Uber won an experimental license to arrange private rides throughout much of Pennsylvania, a victory that came with a warning, quote, to abandon its anarchist ways, unquote, and to comply with state regulators. <laughs> Abandon your ways and comply. I, I, that's they call. I mean, I don't know. I guess the judge told them to abandon their <laughs> anarchist ways. Uh, the Philadelphia- comply with state regulations. Yeah. I mean, you just want it. You you want it sort of muffled by the sound of uh, you know like a face shield on a riot helmet, <laughs> like because Cobra Commander or something. Keys. Uh, Let's see. The Philadelphia Parking Authority has been sparring with Uber drivers. They're impounding their cars and issuing $1,000 fines. The agency considers them to be unlicensed cabbies because they don't have taxi medallions, which can cost as much as half a million dollars in that city. Officers working with the city's Department of Transportation have also conducted stings in Austin, Texas. Mm. So it doesn't sound like we're going to be able to take Uber this time around either. In October, at least five drivers, four in Las Vegas, one in Reno, Nevada, were cited by regulators for a combined total of up to $10,000 in fines. One driver relayed the experience describing five unmarked Nevada Taxi Cab Authority vehicles surrounding his blue Ford Focus as he was driving east on Fashion Show Drive at about 3.30 p.m. He was pulled over while trying to drop off two passengers. Two undercover officers wore black ski masks. Tell me that's not one of the scariest things you could possibly encounter yeah that's i mean it, they're just showing themselves to be a criminal gang at absolutely. that point. absolutely he said this is one of the drivers it's like a sting it was crazy man they had one cop on the front telling me to get out of the car if i had any drugs it was wild he said in january a sting operation netted six uber drivers who were fined more than forty four thousand dollars by palm beach county officials in florida other operations and bans have been launched around the united states in places like tuscaloosa alabama tampa florida boston portland oregon and many others for those that tell us that uh, you know they fought in the military for our freedoms i wonder how this makes them feel because it seems to me that whatever freedoms might exist uh, have have diminished over time. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the freedoms mm. are, you know, maybe we're just getting to see it uh, now, and it's just sort of the yeah. same. But uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're seeing it. In you the land of the free, you should be able to drive somebody someplace and get some gas money for it. Yeah, well, we were talking about these issues before Uber. I remember very clearly one story out of South Florida where they conducted a sting and they busted an elderly gentleman in his 80s, I think it was. Yeah, he was retired. For giving a a young lady a ride home. Young lady turned out to be an undercover police officer, and she begged to give him $5, which he initially refused, but ultimately relented and allowed the girl to give him the $5, and he was then arrested for his efforts. 855 450 free. So these taxi cab companies have for a long time been cracking down on their unlicensed competition. This is just the latest big time iteration of it. There's more coming up on Free Talk Live. Share your thoughts. So, who else will you meet at the Get Prepared Expo? For starters, from Republic Broadcasting, John Moore and John Statmiller. From GCN, Aaron and Brad Dakins, Joyce Riley, and me, Vincent Finelli. Joining us are the instructors whom you've learned to trust Surgeon of the Year, Dr. Norman Sheely. Engineer, Matt Stein, the real Fox Mulder of the X-Files, Dr. Richard Allen Miller, author and analyst, Captain John Reagan, your counter-terrorist from Central America, Mike Ma, dental center owner and my dentist, Dr. Howard Shane, radiation instructor, Craig Douglas, author and survivalist, Rich Sheevan, author, Judy Dollarheit, cancer center owner from Mexico, Dr. Patrick Vickers, bug out expert and pilot, Captain Bill Sermo, beekeeper, Jeff Maddox, seedsman, Mike Knox, author, Gayla Pruitt, author Harry Cooper, food expert Joe Acapinti, and Bill Whaley, the junk man, March 27, 28, and 29. Get preparedexpo.com, the largest preparedness and survival expo in the USA. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. 
Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited to take control of the airwaves here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733 and other driving-related news. Because, by the way, we've been talking about Uber and how they are constantly under fire in various different political jurisdictions uh, for supposedly, you know, not being legal. They're offering an amazing service to people, and also Lyft is under fire in a lot of ways as well. And uh, they've innovated, and the old guard doesn't like that. So they're doing everything they can to stop it with the violence of the system. Kudos to the author over at copblock.org. Let me get, uh, get his name here. It is uh, Ace a Day for doing a pretty good recap of uh, some of the more recent developments. I had not heard of some of the things that were happening there, like in uh, in Pennsylvania and uh, Madison, where they've been cracking down and finding drivers, impounding cars in Philadelphia. I mean, just going crazy on these folks. I'll post the full article on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. In fact, I think I already did that. So check those out at news.freetalklive.com. We had a wine tasting here with Cameron Hughes Wines. They were shipped to us, and I can't recommend highly enough these wines. They really are great. And what's amazing is, is that Cameron Hughes sells directly to you at 40 to 80% off. All you do is go to chwine.com. And they make it easy for you to get, you know, fifty to a hundred dollar bottles of wines at a fraction of the cost. The average cost over there is fifteen dollars for a bottle of wine. Um, so if you go to K- uh, chwine.com, this is Cameron Hughes' site, and you uh, click on the microphone that's in the upper left hand corner, and you enter FTL, you're going to get an additional twenty percent off select bottles 
plus free shipping. Sh free shipping on everything that you order and 20% off select bottles. So you really, when you go to chwine.com, you really want to use coupon code FTL. We talked to Cameron here on the air, um, and you know he runs a great business. It's amazing what he's able to do as far as getting these wines that are, in many cases, rated over 90 points, but you're not paying that kind of rate for it. $15, the average cost of the wines at chwine.com. The microphone's in the upper left-hand corner. Use coupon code FTL. All right, toll-free number 855-450-FREE. Coming up, uh, more on automotive-related news. Mark, you've got a story about the self-driving car. Is it Google's self-driving car or a different one? I don't believe so. No, it's got a steering wheel. Ooh, okay. I didn't know they well, had Google's competition. Well, Google must have had one, too. So it's not the one you see um, with the little that looks like the little bubbles golf cart thing. No. Okay. Well, we'll talk about, uh, I guess it's on a, a quite a journey, apparently. We can discuss that here, but your phones, uh, your phone calls come first. Jay Noon is on the line with us here. Uh, Jay, and uh, where are you calling from tonight? Hey, thanks for taking my call. Sure, so, Jay. Where, where are you calling from tonight? So I'm on the road. I just got done delivering some cattle um, in Massachusetts. Anyways, there's a, a guy up in New York, um, it's called uh, West Wind Farms. If somebody wants to do that on Facebook, they got a Facebook page, or if they just Google um, the trouble with raising animals or something, or trouble from the government. So apparently, from what I gather, this man had a, uh, a working cattle dog. He's got a farm. He raises pigs and goats and um, some cattle and chickens, and he sells the stuff there, the meat. I don't know what their butchering operation is, but the dog didn't have a license, so they gave him a ticket for no, no dog license, and then he beat him because in the New York Code, it says something about that working dogs on farms aren't required to be licensed. Mm -hmm. They're just like any other farm animal. So, okay, that's interesting. And so basically, from and I, and I heard this from another guy I talked to who was a neighbor of his. So anyways, I guess the judge kind of like gave the cop up. On the other is what was related to me. That you cut out should. for a moment there. You said the judge gave the oh. cop what? Uh, he went up one side of him and down the other and told the cop that he needs to throw a relief, read a code before he writes a ticket. Hmm. Yeah, that's um, good advice. Penal code there. So a couple days later, the cop says, hey, I need to make a um, this animal control officer or something says I need to make a uh, inspection. So the guy goes, well, I've got nothing to hide. Fine. Okay. So they basically wrote up a bunch of bunch of BS uh, tickets, a whole bunch of them, citations on this guy, and they're trying to seize his animals now. Oh, no. Um, and this is, I'm sorry, so you said uh, what was the farm called? West Wind? Wind? West, West Wind Acres. Okay. And if you guys look up West Wind Acres on Facebook, you'll you'll get to it. Um, now, Got I'm it. heading out to the court appearance. I'm going out to the court appearance tomorrow. It's at 5.30 p.m. What the Greenville hell kind of court? court. The, the, every now and then I hear about these courts that actually hold court in the evenings. It seems so bizarre to me. I, I mean, most of the courts I've ever been to have closed at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, this is like Village Court or something. It's, it's Green. It's um, Glenville. I'm sorry. Glenville, um, New York. It's at 5.30 p.m. I was in court a couple of times in this little podunk court in Sharon Springs, and it was actually like a DPW garage. The court was at 5.30, and they would pull the trucks out and set up lawn chairs or folding chairs and have court. Um, it's the only one I've ever been in like that. Wow. All right. So let me see if I if I followed you so far on this, Jay. So this West Wind, Far West Wind Acres in Amsterdam, New York, they uh, the cop some cop went after him for an unlicensed dog. They beat that yep. in court, and then the cops came. Was it the police who came and then further ticketed them for various violations, or was it some sort of inspection bureau? Well, it's an officer. If you if you go on that Friends of West Wind Acres page, there's there's all the complaints around there. If you scroll down a page a little bit, and it mm -hmm. says uh, Officer M L Rosinski or something. Um, care of Greenville Police or Glenville Police. Uh, so I'm not, I, I read a couple of different things. So some of them said animal control officer. Some of them said police officer. They're, they're all the same. They're all just a bunch of pirates as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I talk, I called this guy up. I talked to him on the phone today a little bit. 
I told told him I was going to call the show and try to get some people out there. I got a, I called about 30 people I know. I spent about six hours on the phone today while I was driving around calling. Um, so you uh, want folks to go to the hearing. You want folks to go to this hearing. Is this going to be the full Absolutely. hearing where where he's facing all the uh, the farmer is facing all of these charges? He's not even sure what's going on. He says this is my second appearance that he's making. This guy, he kind of, he's starting to understand a little more about liberty now that this is happening to him. It's really woke him up. Um, but uh, he, he don't even really know exactly what's going on at the hearing tomorrow. He doesn't think it's a trial. Nobody said nothing to him about a trial. Mm. Who, who knows? Um, he's just, you know, he's just trying to raise, you know, farm animals. You now, know? why are they right. allegedly, uh, I mean, why are they trying to take the animals uh, from him? Like, for example, there was one where a guy said that he went out to go look at where the cattle were, and there was a little ice on top of the water bucket at 7 o'clock in the morning. And, um, I mean... And that's a violation? You know, uh, sure, I guess. And they said that all the animals were, um, all the livestock and stuff was dehydrated. It was, I read a bunch of this stuff online, and he had a vet come, and the vet came right there that day, like, showed up very soon and said, no, none of these animals are de- dehydrated. They're fine. And so presumably um, the vet will be called as a witness in this case. I well, I would assume. I mean, yeah. I you know, I, well, like I said, this this, this fellow really doesn't have a real good grasp of what's going on, but we're going to try to help him out. Well, I appreciate you doing that. Keep us in the loop. It's Westwind Acres. They're, the Facebook page is Friends of Westwind Acres, and that's how you can kind of follow along with this. Thanks, Jay, for the call tonight. Sounds horrifying. Happen, it's happening to small far- farmers all across America. Yep, that's true. 855 450 free. You can take control here. There's more free talk live coming up. Tell your story. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write WORMS in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you can dial in toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. We'll tell you about a prosecutor who's finally sorry. He's finally found himself... Uh, a conscience, apparently. Sorry for putting an innocent man in prison. And he actually wrote a letter to him. We'll tell you about it here in a moment. Also, your calls and thoughts are welcome about whatever you'd like to discuss. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Of course, sign up for our email list. The email sign-up box is on the left-hand side of the site. Just go to freetalklive.com, scroll down a little bit. You'll find it there. Just drop your email in, and we will keep you up to date with weekly updates. There's the, the weekly digest that is sent out, usually has a link to a video clip of Free Talk Live and a link or several of the most popular stories as voted by listeners like you on our website. So go and check it out over at freetalklive.com. And again, sign up for the email list on the left-hand side of the page there. Let's go to Alma in Georgia. Alma, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hello? Do Do we lose Alma? Sounded like it. Alma going once? I'm going twice. I'm not sure what happened there. I'm going to just, her line's still there, so I'm just going to put her on hold. Maybe, oh, there she Hello. is. Hello. Hey, sweetie. We've got you, Woo. Alma. Go oh, ahead. Come on. Oh, my goodness. All right. You ain't seen wine. I can make some wine. I call it the truth serum. And I <laughs> named it Alma Mia. <laughs> and I, am I on, am I on speaker? No. What does speaker okay, mean? Okay, I speaker didn't phone. know. Okay. But, I mean, I don't uh, know if you're on sp- speakerphone on your end, but you but don't okay? sound like it. You sound fine. I'm okay? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> but I call it Alma Mia, and uh, people come to the house, and they love it. Give them an hour and 15, 30 minutes of 16 ounces, and I know their whole freaking life. Yeah, 16 ounces of wine will uh, make me pretty tipsy, Yeah, that'll take care of it. Not this. This. I have to test it when I make it. Oh, and that's a big mistake when I have to test it as I put it up in bottles and stuff because anybody I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> have you been testing it tonight, Alma? Well, I, Alma likes beer. I know oh, really? not go near Well, my husband left me about a week ago, so oh. I have been trying to. I have been trying to feel pretty damn good, okay? (laughs) I heard you. Well, good luck, Alma. Thanks for the call tonight. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Mark, what's going on with a self-driving car? It's uh, taken off from San Francisco and going to drive to New York City. Hmm, That's a long ride. Yeah, this is from uh, CBSLocal.com, New York, CBS Local. A road trip from California to New York that starts on Sunday is about to make headlines. It's been billed as the longest journey ever for a self-driving car. As CBS2's Kara 
Lotties uh, reported three people will be riding in the modified Audi for the majority of the time. No one will actually be driving. It's the longest coast-to-coast journey of an automated car from San Francisco to New York, says John Absmeyer. Uh, the car has uh, will make a the 3,500-mile trip using Delphi's self-driving technology, which ah, includes not Google roughly 20 sensing systems. Around the periphery, hmm. there's forward vision, there's radar, there's also LIDAR. The car has high-accuracy GPS and is also vehicle-to-vehicle, vehicle-to-infrastructure uh, infrastructure communications. Delphi is putting its autonomous driving system to the long-distance test to collect more data about highways from on-ramp to off-ramp. The technology will control the car. So on the interstates, from on-ramp to off-ramp, the technology will control the car with an operator behind the wheel in case of Just emergency. In case. sure. Yep. We're using, and this is what I've thought is, is like when you start laying out the roads in the United States, mm-hmm. the interstates are a very small percentage of the road space, right? Like there's a lot more highways and byways and um, neighborhood roads and things like that. I don't really need a car that's going to take me from my house to, uh, you know, my uh, my in-law's house in Florida if it just handles the interstate, right? My uh, wife's Prius gets something like 400 miles to the uh, a tank full of gas. We literally could stop two or three times on the way and essentially leave in the morning and be there within something like 24 hours if the car would drive itself. Mm-hmm. Um, so but instead, th- you got to stop in hotels yeah, or whatever. I think this is really going to be what sort of does in domestic air travel. Uh, you hmm. kind of have to ask yourself, would you, you know, if you've got to make a 16-hour drive, would you rather just leave when you want to or take a plane flight that's going to be, yeah, it's going to be two hours to get there, but you also have to have that hour and a half ahead of time at the airport, the drive to the airport, the drive yep, from the airport. Um, and all the hustling around, yep, the, 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 dealing the, with security. The, the free government massage, um, the uh, the free government x-ray bath or whatever it is that right. you're, you're getting. You um, might miss the plane. The plane might be late. So in the, all that stuff. Yeah. Usually, when the plane's late, you're uh, probably going to be dealing with some weather issues anyway. But I think it's. It, I, I really do believe it's going to do in domestic air travel, and um, now people will probably want to fly from New York to San Francisco. But they, if it's going to be a 16-hour drive or less, they'll probably just want to take the car. It seems to me. Anyway. Um, going on here. They won't be hands-free for 100% of the time. In urban environments, operators will take over and drive. Only five places in the U.S., including California, Washington, D.C., and Nevada, have specific regulations for autonomous driving. For the rest of the states, the operator will follow whatever the local, local road laws are. We'll have to follow the laws of that state. In some cases, we'll have to keep a hand on the wheel and abide by uh, local law in those areas, uh, Seb says Absmeyer. And it's interesting that, you know, here we're seeing how the state can really put a crimp in tech, new technology. You have to, well, you're going to have to keep a hand on this autonomous car's wheel. Really? Well, that's what they're saying. Wow. Okay. Um, and... Some cases they have to keep a hand on the wheel. Um, Delphi hopes that the road ahead includes automakers putting this technology into future cars. The car will drive six to eight hours at a time. It is set to leave San Francisco on Sunday and should arrive in New York uh, for the auto show the first week of April. So there you go. It's exciting. The future is here. Self-driving cars are coming through your state. Probably. Yeah, there's an, uh, an actually a long story over at ArsTechnica.com about this very car. They got a ride in Delphi's what they call tricked-out Audi, uh, and they say that um, if you're a commuter, and I'm jumping like way down in the article here, and because they talk about the they all cover some of the same ground that you just did. If you're a commuter and you've experienced bumper-to-bumper traffic, you can imagine that relinquishing the wheel to uh, during that particular ha- hell of the modern era could be a beautiful thing. I was so ready. I hopped in the back seat of Delphi's Audi and we went on an eight mile drive around Mountain View with a highly trained operator who didn't touch the wheel once. The drive was exactly what you'd want it to be uneventful. Delphi had set up the car's infotainment system to deliver video representing what the car was seeing through its various sensors, and it noted that any production version of an autonomous car might have a similar but more refined video feed. Absmeyer, who was sitting in the in, next to me in the back, involuntarily fidgeted at one point while the car was taking too long to merge. 
The car is very conservative and won't try to be aggressive in certain situations, he told me. Seems like a smart programming move. Yeah. Uh, he told me adding that this can lead to longer than normal wait in the lane if you want to get into uh, if the lane you want to get into is going too fast. But the driver never had to take over and Delphi's system was always able to get the car over to the correct lane in time. The car will also respond to limited human direction while in automated mode. If your lane becomes woefully stuck and the lanes to the side of you are empty, hitting the blinker will instruct the car to change lanes despite whatever its navigational instructions might indicate. In fact, for most of the ride, I couldn't even tell that no human was driving the car. When we got back to Delphi's parking lot, the driver flipped the car back into manual mode and found a parking space. When the system does eventually have all the, or when the system does eventually have all the testing required to become production grade, the uh, the guy in charge said that it will likely cost somewhere to close to what a high end safety package add on would cost you in a new car today. That can be as high as ten thousand um, dollars. Here's what I th if once you do these, a lot of driving, it yeah. might be worth it. Once these things are in vehicles, though, you're going to go from uh, very quickly to full implementation because if somebody's turns this on, they're in the driver's seat, somebody's going to doze off relatively quickly. I mean, these, yeah. this is just how humans are. They're not going to be, you know, like keeping one finger on the wheel or anything like that. All right, more coming up here in moments. 855-450 free. You can share your thoughts on self-driving cars. Are you ready for it? It's Free Talk Live. The human body is extraordinary. Despite all the stresses we inflict upon it, it still works hard to stay in balance. Thousands upon thousands of people rely upon heart and body extract to help their body stay balanced. This excellent 100% natural herbal formula helps maintain healthy blood pressure levels, cleans arteries, promotes good circulation, balances cholesterol, and more. HB extract paired with healthy lifestyle choices like good nutrition and exercise can give you a life free of pain, sickness, and fear. Recapture your youthful vitality and experience your body healing itself with the aid of hb extract it's extremely effective and it starts working in just days visit hbextract.com to learn more and to read scores of testimonials from satisfied customers and we've never increased our price in over 10 years that makes heart and body extract as great a value now as it was the first day we sold it a healthy heart is a happy heart call 866-295-5305 or go to hbextract.com don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is it's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas there's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty there's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it but here in new hampshire people are doing it 101 reasons liberty lives in new hampshire a documentary by free state project early movers watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com 101reasonsfilm.com 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. You take control toll-free here. In the remaining moments, we've got enough time for you. If you dial in now at 855-450-FREE, that's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, it's Ian. And Mark. And don't forget, you can support this show and all of the other great shows on LRN.FM. There are dozens of liberty-oriented programs that air on LRN.FM. And they air on the Internet. Of course, you can go and listen to that anywhere in the world if you have Internet connection. But much of the world does not have internet. I mean, it's it's hard to really imagine this as uh, those of us in the United States and in other developed parts of the world, we're so used to our internet. I've got two internet connections here in the <laughs> studio, and I also have a third one on my cell phone. So technically, there are three internet connections within the uh, the distance that my hands can uh, can travel, uh, the immediate uh, vicinity here. So internet Your is class privilege is ubiquitous uh, for us, and and it's easy to take that for granted. It's hard to imagine living in a world that doesn't have it, but about half of the world's population live in that world. They do not have access true. to the Internet. And uh, what they do have access to is satellite communications. They have uh, a free-to-air satellite that is available in co all countries around the world, channels uh, that you know essentially you can pick up with a very, very low-cost receiver and satellite dish. I mean, literally you're talking about $200 plus whatever it costs to install it, and you can get entertainment for... Uh, as long as that product lasts, as long as the dish, you know, lasts and the, the receiver lasts. So there's no monthly fee, is what I'm saying, to get these free-to-air channels. We have, we're, uh, we're on free-to-air over North and Central America, so people in Central America and some poorer countries down there can receive us. And people in America that don't have Internet can also receive us. Believe it or not, there are people in the United States who don't have Internet. And uh, But more importantly, I think that LRN.FM should be heard globally, and we were on in Africa up until mid-February. We were on gratis at, uh, as a courtesy of our satellite provider. They gave us kind of a bonus for a few years, and the free ride ended. And I'd like to get back on in Africa because we were reaching – Africa is basically the part of the world that has like the least internet access. These are the least connected people in the, in the entire globe, and mm -hmm. there are millions of them there. So we can reach them with the ideas of liberty as long as they speak English. Uh, we can reach them with those ideas. Quite a few do. And a lot do. Uh, and, and we can do it for relatively affordable. I mean, for a few hundred bucks a month, we can do this. It costs, but it adds up, right? Like a few hundred bucks, several hundred bucks a month over three years turns out to about $22,000. So we're trying to raise that money. You can help us with the Indiegogo campaign over at L, excuse me, africa.lrn.fm. Contribute whatever feels right to you. And then please share the link so other people can find it. We've got less than two months to do this. I think it can be done. But I really don't know. I've never done anything like this before, so it's up to you. Go to africa.lrn.fm. It can be done. It can be. It can be done. Whether it will or not is up to you. We have people funding already, so. Yep, and thank you for everybody who's already stepped forth. If you can't afford 5 or 10 bucks, uh, then you know, please just share the link, africa.lrn.fm. Yeah, I think it's important to note that it's africa.lrn.fm, because right. usually we say, when we say a .dot um, website, we usually say, like, africa.freetalklive.com. Yeah. So it's africa.lrn.fm. Yep. All right. So uh, here's a story about the prosecutor who found himself a conscience 
decades later. From RawStory.com, the lead prosecutor in a case that sent an innocent Louisiana man to death row for 30 years has now penned a heartfelt apology to the man admitting, quote, I was not as interested in justice as I was in winning, unquote. In the letter published by the Shreveport Times, attorney A.M. Marty Stroud III claimed responsibility for the conviction of Glenn Ford in the 1983 murder of Isidore Roseman, a Shreveport jeweler. Quote, I was at the trial of Glenn Ford from beginning to end. I witnessed the imposition of the death sentence upon him. I believed that justice was done. I had done my job. I was one of the prosecutors, and I was proud of what I had done wrote Ford, who's now 64, uh, or excuse me, Ford, Ford was the guy who got put away, I apologize. Uh, Stroud is the attorney. Ford, now 64, was released from Louisiana's notorious Angola prison on Tuesday by a Shreveport judge after Louisiana state prosecutors stated they could no longer stand by his conviction. Ford was sentenced to death by an all-white jury, carefully selected by prosecutors, and convicted despite the testimony of a primary witness who admitted in court that she lied to protect her boyfriend, who was also a suspect. Hmm. You know, it's interesting that the state and the defense get the same amount of uh, sort of, uh, I don't know what you call it when you toss a juror out, um, but don't you think that like when it's- Preemptory challenges. A preemptory challenge. It, it, it doesn't seem like, I mean, it doesn't seem fair that it's fair, right? Um, it's the I don't get it. It's the, okay, the government paid for the courthouse, the government yeah. pays the judge, the government pays the prosecutor, oftentimes the government pays the defense attorney. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they decide when it's going to be, where it's going to be, and pretty much everything about it, and then they get to fight the case on equal footing with you. As though if you want to call it's it fair. That. Yeah, it's not equal at all. Right. Like They the, also get the last word in most cases I've seen as well. The defense should get to throw out six people and the prosecution get to throw out none. One. Yeah, or zero. Right, zero. Why should they? Good These point. are your citizens. Why would you get to throw any of them out? Good point. What about the jury of your so-called peers? Stroud wrote his letter in support of Ford, who's seeking to be compensated by the state for the time spent while wrongly incarcerated. You're darn right. Stroud wrote in his letter, quote, Glenn Ford should be completely compensated to every extent possible because of the flaws of a system that effectively destroyed his life. Since he was involved, shouldn't it be taken out of his pension? That's a great point. Uh, The audacity of the state's effort to deny Mr. Ford any compensation for the horrors he suffered in the name of Louisiana justice is appalling, wrote Stroud. Yeah, he's appalled, but he hasn't written a check. Yeah, according to Stroud, he was arrogant and only interested in winning the case, writing, quote, In 1984, I was 33 years old. I was arrogant, judgmental, narcissistic, and very full of myself. I was not as interested in justice as I was in winning. To borrow a phrase from Al Pacino in the movie And Justice for All, winning became everything. Stroud admitted he was too passive when it came to listening to Ford's side of the story, stating, quote, I did not consider the rumors about the involvement of parties other than Mr. Ford to be credible, especially since the three others who were indicted for the crime were ultimately released for a lack of sufficient evidence to proceed to the trial. My mindset was wrong and blinded me to my purpose of seeking justice rather than obtaining a conviction of a person who I believed to be guilty. I did not hide evidence. I simply did not seriously consider that sufficient information may have been out there that could have led to a different conclusion. And that omission is on me. After yeah, I think that it's, this is a great and instructive uh, situation. I mean, this guy, uh, you know, I mean, he, he believed this. And sometimes the things you believe are wrong. Mm. And it's, it, you know, it, it's good to be able to sort of step back and take a look. It's hard. Yeah, and, uh, well, you know, he managed to do it 30, 30 years later. Um, but it's also, you know, not hard to believe that this is true of a lot of prosecutors, right? Like, just for anybody out there thinking, oh, this is just that one guy. No, no. Uh, a lot of prosecutors are very interested in getting convictions. They're not so interested in justice, whatever that means to them. To them, they want to get convictions to pad their, their, uh, their numbers so they can maybe run for judge at some point or perhaps some other higher-level political office. AG. and. And these people, these human beings who are the victims of this system, many of whom are being convicted of victimless crimes in the first place, even if they did commit the so-called crime, they never actually had a victim in the first place, uh, these people are being abused. They are, they are being laid as the pavement along which these 
prosecutors are walking to political uh, success. You know, um, it's sick. The what when they pay these people out, you never know what this person could have made in their life. Maybe they would have made ten thousand dollars a year. Maybe they would have made a million dollars. The year. victim or the prose- or the prosecutor. The people, well, the people that uh, are going to prison. Go, okay. Um, illegally uh, or you know uh, erroneously. Right. Um, and you never know. I, I don't know how to stop this stuff and turn it around, but. It seems like they should get a good amount of money per year that they were gone. Oh, I don't yeah. know what that number should be, but, you know, and, and people should see it on their tax bills, too, because mm. so many people support this. So many people assume— The crackdown that, on crime, yeah, you mean? So many people assume that just because somebody's been uh, charged with something that they're guilty right. of something. We've been told our whole lives that a person is innocent until proven guilty, but— Somehow or another, people are just so lockstep with uh, the government when they decide to charge somebody with something. They need to see what the cost of that is. A little bit more here from Stroud. After apologizing to Ford and all involved in the trial, uh, Stroud called for an end to the death penalty, saying that it was, quote, an abomination that continues to scar the fibers of this society. Unquote. Yeah, well, in this circumstance, this guy did go to death row. He did. Yeah, and so— a, if, In a really crappy prison, too. And what I think—I think anybody who supports the death penalty is responsible for exactly what they want to kill people for. They're responsible for killing innocent people. Mm-hmm. When you support the death penalty, this guy was innocent, went to death row, could very well have been could executed have been. like so many people have been executed Hundreds. erroneously yeah. um, at this point. So when you, when you support a system, a governmental system in which you participate and— and you advocate that that governmental sense system kill people. As far as I'm concerned, you're guilty of murder because you know that an innocent person will be killed. You're a murderer. Stop supporting the death penalty. It's exactly what you're standing against. I end with the hope that Providence will have more mercy for me than I showed Glenn Ford, but I'm also sobered by the realization that I am certainly not deserving of it. We'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. You know how annoying it is when someone keeps stopping mid-sentence as though he or she were asking you a series of questions? Avoid doing that. It sounds unnervingly tentative, and it imposes upon the listener to help you complete the thought. And if you're a job seeker, this alone could be a deal killer. An effective communicator sounds more confident. Complete the thought. Avoid making the listener impatient. With money and attention so scarce now, Effective communication skills have never been more important. Cutting through the clutter rather than blending into the blah, blah, blah will help you connect better no matter what the conversation. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Survivalspeech.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, March 23rd, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.74 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,184 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $269. 
Antiwar.com reports in his first public comments since the election on the worsening U.S.-Israeli relations, President Obama said he believes he has to take Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu at his word when he says he opposes Palestinian statehood. Netanyahu had claimed to be in favor of the two-state solution for many years, but publicly disavowed the position just days before the election last week, which appear to have gained him considerable right-wing support. Netanyahu followed up on the election and White House criticism by trying to backtrack once more, saying he's still technically in support of a two-state solution, just not right now. The U.S. has pushed for clarification. Whatever ultimately comes out of that, Republicans are slamming President Obama over his comments, with Senator Chuck Grassley from Iowa lamenting that the U.S.-Israeli partnership should be assumed to be over, adding the extremely Twitter-friendly complaint, Obama should reconsider because Israel only friend of U.S. Yes. The ever-furious John McCain from Arizona also blasted Obama's temper tantrum, insisting Netanyahu should be given the benefit of the doubt on whatever he claims his position to be at any given moment. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system and to fully capitalize on that decision in their fundraising efforts. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports a dozen train cars, including five carrying methanol, derailed on Saturday near Valley Mills, Texas, sparking an evacuation and a hazardous material team response. No injuries or fires were reported, and only one or two methanol-carrying tanks had leaks, according to public safety spokesman Trooper D.L. Wilson. About 10 homes within 1,000 feet were evacuated after the accident that happened at about 5 p.m. Residents were allowed to return to their homes around 9 p.m. There was heavy rain during the time, but it was unclear what caused the derailment, and an investigation is ongoing, according to Wilson. Safety vehicles struggled to reach the 70-car train accident due to the weather. Methanol is toxic and often used as fuel or as a solvent. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the U.S. Supreme Court on Monday will take up a free speech case on whether Texas was wrong in rejecting a specialty license plate displaying a Confederate flag. The nine justices will hear one-hour oral arguments in a case that raises the issue of how states can allow or reject politically divisive messages on license plates without violating free speech rights. States can generate revenue by allowing outside groups to propose specialty license plates that people then pay a fee to put on their vehicle. When Texas rejected the proposal in 2010, the state said it had received public comment that suggested many members of the general public find the design offensive, in large part due to the Confederacy being perceived as synonymous with the institution of slavery. The New Orleans-based 5th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that Texas officials did not have grounds to reject the plate, prompting the state to seek high court review. The legal issue is in part whether messages on state-issued license plates represent speech by the government or an endorsement of a private message. If determined to be private private speech, the state's rejection should violate the U.S. Constitution's First Amendment free speech guarantee. Steve Shapiro, legal director of the ACLU, which backs the Sons of Confederate Veterans, said although the flag served as a banner for those who supported slavery and segregation, Texas cannot pick and choose the plate it approves on ideological grounds. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Today's most popular video games take place in dangerous post-apocalyptic landscapes. But are these games enough to prepare our kids for the actual post-apocalyptic future we will all soon face? Well, I think these games are quite effective at teaching our kids skills like finding shotgun ammo and leading elite squads of super soldiers. But these aren't 